you know, I was telling the doctor, I'm like, he's like, are you okay? So you're good. And I was like, well, not really. Like he was like sending me on my way after a couple of weeks or whatever. And I'm like, you know, it just sucks that I don't feel hundred percent walking around. And yep. he goes, uh, how old are you? This is the doctor. He goes, how old are you? I'm like 33. He's like, get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Welcome back to another episode of If This Doesn't Work. I'm here with my man Sky. Let's go. What's up? And Fluffy. Fluffy. Sky and Fluff. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm grateful to be here. Yeah, Thanks man. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thank uh, you I met you one time. Uh-huh. Uh, at do you, you probably don't remember really. I do not. You do a lot though. You're probably out and about. I am, but but I am pretty good with rem remembering people. I'm not very so. memorable. You know, I didn't do a whole nah. lot of extra shit. But we we uh it was at a um a psychedelic healing center. Okay. So I think it's called Inner Path Wellness. And they offer okay. ketamine therapy and psilocybin therapy and the other shit too, not just psychedelics, but it's psychedelic, like medically backed, you know, therapeutical shit. The and, real uh, stuff. The real yeah, deal. Yeah. And and it was like an open house. So it was like everyone was just there. And you were there and you were, you know, telling me that you, you give massages. I still don't remember, bro, but <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds it. like nah, it sounds like a vibe because I mean obviously I, I pay it was attention a cool to your stuff on Facebook so nah um yeah yeah nah I was um it sounds like something we just part of together <laughs> you know, smoke bro. I smoke heavy okay too much too much I <laughs> all know, right so to okay let that go. Yeah. that's one brand for the podcast you know yeah man um shit. So so, just talk to me. What's 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 the deal with this? Not much, man. Um, we just kind of do it. I like talking a lot, you know. I could tell. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's one thing about me is I never really shut the fuck up. So I figured it's the same thing for me. Yeah. I well, it's it's not a bad thing. It's like a gift and a curse. I agree. Like I'm an oversharer, but mm. I like to know how people's minds work. Mm. So I am over explaining my thought process okay. because I know I would like that. You know mm. what I mean? Now, not everyone does, mm. but I want to know why you chose the thing, you know, right, or like right. what made you think of that thing. I want to hear the thread, the thought thread sometimes. I like that. No. So I think um, it's similar to me in that aspect of saying what you mean and, and what you want to understand the first time so you don't have to repeat yourself and yeah. say, well, I meant, I said this, but I really meant to uh -huh. say that. It's one of my biggest pet peeves about people. And here's the thing, it's like taught to us. Yeah. Like we're really taught not to be direct. I mean, I it's it's like the, uh, it's like you're walking on eggshells and trying to be, it's a, do Oof. I look fat in this dress? No one can say yes, right? It's like, I, under, I, you know what I mean? Though? Or do I'm I just, have bad breath? Yeah. And you don't want to tell somebody they have bad breath because it, we look at it as rude. Even yeah. Though or some people will feel attacked. Right. right. And it's like if you give people critiques and they don't ask, sometimes you can feel attacked. Yeah. Even as someone who asks for critiques, I'll say that like I ask for them. Right. Uh -huh. And even still, mm -hmm. sometimes when they hit my ears, mm -hmm. ooh, you know, even though I'm asking for it. And then <laughs> it takes me a second to go, oh, OK, that they're literally just trying to help me. Truth hurts. But it's, yeah. But it's okay. weird how ingrained that is. Like even when I ask for it, hey, did, tell me if I'm fucking up. If someone's like, hey, you're fucking up. I'm like, ah, <laughs> it's like, ouch. <laughs> For me, I don't get that only because I think of the fact of congruency, and I feel like a lot of people are incongruent. They say that we wear three faces. They say we wear a face when we're alone, a face when we're friends and family, and a face when we're at work, right? We're in public. And one of the things I've noticed as I've gotten, I, I've gotten through this whole massage thing for the last 11 years is that a lot of people um, are treading between those three faces trying to figure out which one of those faces is them. That's that's number one. Number two, um, do like you, you think it's one of them? Real quick before you go to number two, do you, I, it's probably some type of mix, right? I, or none of them are the real you? Or what do no, you think? No, no, no. I think for a lot of these people, uh, was because I was talking to a young uh, lady, of, a friend of mine, who I was saying between being in a space of always ever growing versus like this this ratchet energy that <laughs> seems to be very pushed upon of us in America right uh -huh. now. And I say like, especially for people that look like me, black people, a lot of us use the whole ratchet and attach to the ratchet and where we come from and and that's how my people move and that's how we talk type of deal. Right. And they, they I want to say, identify with that so heavy, but also at the same time want to be spiritual and want to be uh, 
you know, I want to elevate out of that, but you still are attaching yourself to that identity wise. Right. And kind of going to faces. Um, I feel like just me being congruent. One of the things I want to have consistent is like when we interact, when you listen to my music, when I give out a massage, when I just have a conversation. Um, yeah. What do you mean by congruence? Congruent, like, ahead, congruency yeah, like, means it's consistency. Other, okay. It's a consistency. Okay. And a lot of people don't have consistencies, right? Um, and just all the things I do, whether it be massage, finance, music, I want there to be a, con- a consistency energy with me. The energy. And just the, the. I get that. Not just the energy, but the representation is that like when you come across me, the time you meet me to the time you, we disconnect for whatever reason, right? If we do that you'll always say that this guy was the same guy I met from then then to now. Right. Uh, that's what I feel like a lot of people missing with incongruencies. I feel like a fair point. Right. And I totally, I'm not disagreeing. Right. In addition to that. Love, I, stop. I'm listening. In addition to that, I feel like, you know, to be human is to be, is a duality, Right. Like I say, there's a there's a hood rat in me and a monk in me, <laughs> you know. And those are like the it's like the good wolf bad wolf type shit. Right. Where so I understand not being able to be fully congruent, you know, mm. in the beginning of your journey. You know mm. what I mean? Because you are battling this societal identity that's been pushed upon you. Mm. I mean, especially so, uh, you know, uh, yeah, as, as 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 being identified as part of a group, right? Mm. As being a black man, it's like you're supposed to have certain opinions. That's wild to me. Like I like like it, maybe you don't identify with that, but like if if it's like you're supposed to have certain opinions, political beliefs, you're supposed to like represent an entire. That's just gotta feel heavy. Do you not feel that? I mean, I feel like that's for everybody. Whether you're talking about white people, black people, Asian people, yeah, it's the same situation right. because of the layers of how people identify with what society gives them versus who they decide to be. Right. So. One of the things I have a disconnect with, whether we talk about white or black, is the fact that these are social constructs. Like right. They really are social constructs. So, they was yeah. given, right? And it's Americanized, right? And when it comes down to it, a lot of whether we talk about either side have trouble without that identity. So mm-hmm. if you take blackness away from a lot of black people, they would have? not identify. Right. Same with white people. Right, right, right. right? And that's what I mean about the incongruencies, right? I'm not saying those things aren't part of who you are, because they are, like you're saying, we're multi-faceted, uh, multi-dimensional yeah. and stuff like that. We have all these variations to us. But a lot of us don't dive deep enough within ourselves to find out not only just what our purpose is, what we feel like is purposeful, right. and what we feel like is valuable, Um so we never really find ourselves behind that. Mm. That's what I notice in a lot of people's experience. For sure. My experience. For sure. Yeah. I could definitely relate to that. And I feel like um, the social constructs thing is so heavy mm-hmm. because, like you said, it's Americanized. If we were born somewhere different, we would be different. Like People don't get that. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people's personality, mine included, mm-hmm. is a lot of what we're taught. You know 100%. what I mean? It's like I believe men and women behave a certain way. Or these people, wave, because I was taught this way, we grew up in this Western culture. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's really hard to I disidentify. Like mm-hmm. a lot of what the healing journey has been for me. God, the healing journey sounds corny, but no, with my, that's it. it but it uh, the it, the the thing for me, it was <laughs> like not so much adding new shit to the arsenal, but mm. getting rid of the shit that no longer serves me. Unlearning. Actually, me unlearning. You know, yeah, yeah, the unlearning process, mm-hmm. which is so hard when you realize how tangled you are. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're so ingrained with the societal constructs that you're like. Mm-hmm. And then when did you start all? The, when did you start your shit? You always been all woke. I mean, you seem like you got it. You know, you well, seem I like you're like, like different. That's why I wanted to have you on. Like your whole that. energy and vibe is different. You know, it's like you're you're interesting, and I'm, I'm like weird, man. Yeah, you're weird, and I like that. You <laughs> I know, appreciate facts. That. Yeah, because I'm weird. So I, I you're I a see... cool weird, though. Right. You, you're one of the coolest weirdos I've ever met, <laughs> and I wouldn't even call you a weirdo. But I mean, that's all perspective. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so going back to it, uh, I was born premature. Um, so got I'm here say, early. Right, right. Started off <laughs> early, right. And then my first car accident happened March 15, 2009. That uh, left me in a coma for two weeks. Really? How old were how old are you there? I was 15. Not good at math. Yeah. 15. 15. So you're not driving. I was a passenger. Okay. So and not in your control when you not, get in this terrible in accident. But, I mean, I feel like any accident really isn't in our control. Mm. 
it's a catalyst. We usually can catalyze towards the mm-hmm. accident, but it's not in our control to be in the accident or not. Right. right? That's why it's an accident. Right. Guess, yeah. Um, and then the second one happened. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't just get past the coma oh, sorry, for two sorry, weeks, sorry. bro. All right, so, so. <laughs> you, you, because I've, I've told this story so many times, and yeah. it's, it's like talking about somebody else at this point. Oh, it's wild. It's because so it's wild. Because it's so surreal that it was even you. Yes, I get that. Even thinking about it and talking about the story, telling the story. Because you're from such a different place right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's interesting. I, even, even afterwards, though, I still because I don't remember any of it. I mean, not the. The coma. I don't remember any of the coma. Sure. I remember the second accident, which I'll get into in a moment. The first accident, I was a passenger um, in the back seat of a Jeep Wrangler with the rollback time, and they say that most accidents happen between three to five miles from where you live at, uh-huh. right? And can you go and grab her, bro? She's like, <laughs> tell me right now. I love her to death, but she's just, ugh. Um. Anyway, um. You're the first person who brought a dog. <laughs> well, thank you guys for <laughs> Usually that. Usually, it's She's dogs. a service dog too, by the way. So, she's just a she's just curious. <laughs> I can't um, I had quiet, these two like friends that. of mine. She's not. She, she, <laughs> she's not noisy at all. She's not noisy at all. Yeah. But I got these two friends uh, that picked me up, and and I was obviously a stoner back then, and had them take me back to my house. And the guy who was driving. Had just got his license. And you know how, I want to say East Coast drivers. It ain't just a Maryland thing, a Jersey thing. It ain't a Florida thing. It's like everybody on the East Coast drives aggressively as hell. Right? That's what I realized. <laughs> I feel like that's just driving. Yeah, that's just, a, no, but that's the East Coast okay, thing. Because in California, fair. they don't have that sort Okay, of I haven't spent a lot of time out you there. Got a, you got aggressions over there, but the overall energy with people driving here is aggression. Interesting. And it's because everybody's in a rush. Uh, that's the East Coast energy, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, for sure. Um, So uh, we were... Uh, like I said, like five miles away from the house, the dude tried to make it uh, in a legal left turn to try to cut through traffic to make it to where we had to go quicker. At that specific time, the light let go, and <laughs> obviously traffic let go, and we were in the middle of trying to do this, hit mid-turn in. So we got hit on his driver's side door. Wildly enough, he got the least amount of the injury. Uh, he got cuts and bruises. Right. It was three of us in the car. The guy that was a passenger was, he rolled out, and I was ejected out. Because when the car got hit, it flipped. And the car was so bad after the accident, since we all got some way thrown out, right. rolled out, fell out, mm-hmm. they said that had we would have been in the car, we would have been decapitated. That's how bad the car was when Man. it got done. So it's a right. blessing you got thrown out. The all right. But um, I landed head first, I think. I don't know how the hell I landed, but I must have landed and hit the back of my head. Mm. And because my face was all, uh, my, there was a giant face or giant scab on the right side of my face that I had for a while. I don't remember any of this. This is from the police report right. and from what I was told. On a spiritual aspect, I, I find it funny with this whole just push for the multiverse and just talking about these multivariances of the same person or the same being. I feel as though... When I was in that coma, even I don't remember anything like that, and I do feel like, on a spiritual aspect, there was a lot of love that was given to me to come back. Mm. But when I came back, talking about um, variations of a multiverse, the multitude of a person, I feel like I was switched out with a different version of myself. Mm. That version of myself was a b- better off, because most people I know that get into an accident like that have a, a specific strong head injury, whether it be to the front or the back of their head that they come back differently in a way of being lesser than what they were. Whether they're not as happy-go-lucky, not as um, strong with their memory. temper. There's all kinds of shit. All types of uh, differences. Now, did you notice it right away? Uh, No, it was was something gradual, but... That makes sense. It'd be wild if you woke up and just felt there. I heard (laughs) of people speaking different languages and shit from a car. That's what I heard. I don't remember seeing any bright lights or anything like that. You can't speak Chinese or none? Nah, I can't speak (laughs) any No Mandarin? (laughs) But my rap came from that. Oh, wow. You weren't rapping before that? No. I didn't have any... I didn't... I guess I wasn't good enough or I didn't try. I was into rap, but I never tried it. Okay. And it's funny that after the accident, that was one of the gifts that I came out with. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. cool though that you even can look at it as a lens from a lens of like a gift, you know. Like, bro, and same with the uh, fracture left arm. If it wasn't for me getting into this, I wouldn't be a massage. What happened with the arm? Was that the second accident? That was the second accident. I see that. Um, nice segue. Yeah, two <laughs> years. 
wasn't long enough because I was very traumatized after that first car. That's accident. something people don't talk about. Yeah, PTSD from a car oh, accident. Oh man, it's 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 so legit. Like it's some real, yes, it's so real. It's yes. real to the point where I couldn't get into being a passenger in a car for a while. Right, and just being in a passenger was very traumatizing. Yep. Like like I was driving. Yeah. And people think that PTSD is reserved for just veterans. And, and it's like, yeah. bro, post-traumatic stress disorder happens from not even the event. It's how you interpret the event and how your Damn. body interprets it. You That's know? so deep. I yeah. never thought about it. That's like what trauma that. really is. Your trauma response isn't so much because it's all relative, yeah, right? Yeah. It's whatever happens. You get lost in the mall for 10 minutes and, and be, be so traumatized. Yep, from yep. That's yep. true. Yep. I never it's thought no, about It's not that. even so much the external event. It's how you internally had dealt with that, you know? Oh, man. So it's so funny that you say that because... I was able to get over it in a matter of years mm -hmm. only because of the way I thought about it. So it's funny that you're talking about the way we internalize the the accident and right. how it keeps this this like extreme trauma response on your nervous system. To protect you. It's right. like, hey, don't get in this car. This is, I'm trying, it's, it's survival. It is. But at the same time, in the same way that we condition ourselves to do that unconsciously, you have to consciously uncondition yourself to break that. That was the only way I was able to get behind a car again. Um, I looked at it as, don't get me wrong, I think about it all the time. Whenever I'm driving in between cars and stuff right. like that, and the way that people are, I'm always thinking about how fast the accident happened. It doesn't even That's happen. That's so jarring about it. Right. It never goes away. The yeah. trauma never goes away. Yeah. The thing about it is, instead of using it as something to keep me in that space of the PTSD, it'll never go away. I use it as a reason on why to calm down in the moment and breathe. Mm. and get my wits about myself so I don't get into that again. Damn, that's gas. Because yeah. so, then not only are you trying to help this situation, yes. that can help you, your mindset, period, yes. in any situation. Bro, it's changed my life because I drive a lot. That's I have to as a mobile massage therapist. I have no choice but to drive. So you had to get over this. Fear. I had to. If I want to If I want to get to where I want to go as I've gone. You need to literally drive there. <laughs> yeah, drive, literally yeah. drive everywhere. Right. You know what I mean? And um, I love driving. I think driving is definitely a beautiful thing. The worst part about driving, though, is other people. In the way that other people drive, it's yeah, not it's driving itself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, so the second car accident that happened July second, two thousand eleven. I had just graduated high school. Um, so my mom had just bought me the car. I wasn't ready to get behind. I was still going through my PTSD situation. wasn't ready to get behind a car, uh, the wheel of a car. But it was just me and her. So, with that being said, I had to follow her back. So she saw the whole accident in her rear view. So I can only imagine her point of view and, uh, you know, just her how baby her boy. Mind. Yeah, right? Yeah. So the way that the car accident happened, it was going 60 miles an hour. And that little thing that wakes you up when you're going off the side of the road. Mm -hmm. that the wakes little you up, little, Yeah, right. Uh, looked down for a quick moment, started going off the side of the road. When that hit, I guess I panicked. And when I yanked. panicked, I pressed. Yeah, yanked the car, yanked the wheel. And I pressed on the gas, I guess, instead of the brake, of course which made the car start to swerve. So next thing I know is the last thing I could have, the dumbest thing I could have done, I thought I was going to die, so I took my hands off the wheel. I took my hands off the wheel, closed my eyes. Because you noticed that you what you were doing didn't matter. Well, you, yeah, because the way, that the, wheel, yeah, the way that the wheel was moving, I right. wasn't in control of yeah. it. So I thought I was going to really die. So the way that the car flipped... Uh, God, that's got to be scary. Man, that's what I'm saying. Like, it was like a movie. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, was like a that. movie. I swear to <laughs> God, it's like a movie. Jesus, please. <laughs> take the wheel. The way that the car flipped, the way my mom said it flipped, so obviously it's on its wheels. The car flipped like this, like Dang. a movie. So it it, it literally, right? It, it was all types Dang. of crazy. And she said it looked like a movie scene. You had so, a seatbelt on? No. Well, yeah, oh. I did. I did. No, if I didn't oh. have a seatbelt on, definitely. Yeah. Would have Hell yeah, easy would have died. And it's crazy because on the I was on a parkway and I didn't hit any other cars. So you talk about Jesus take the wheel, God take the wheel, universe take the wheel, whatever. Um, the spiritual aspect comes into play where. I landed on my wheels. <laughs> he landed it. Landed on my way. Landed it on my <laughs> wheels. It. He fucking landed it. <laughs> he gets tens across the board. <laughs> ten and ten. He didn't die. Oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, I happened to look down for a quick moment because uh, I, I tried to move my arm and all I could feel was this. Mm. Right? That's I not looked a good down time. at my arm. Right? Not at all. My arm was like this big, bro. I'm, I'm a skinny guy. My arm was like this big, and it looked like somebody had placed a miniature bomb in my arm the way that it exploded. I just looked down for a quick second, and it was a hot summer day like how it's been this this past summer. Very humid. It was in Jersey. and um, That's your problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, shout uh, out to Jersey. Look, shout out to New Jersey. Um, 
I started to panic. Started screaming at the top of my lungs, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> and this is where it gets spiritual. I have no idea because I, I didn't hit any cars, right? I have no idea is where these these people or these beings came from. But it was a bunch of people that came over to my car, all crowded around the car, and all said in unison, just breathe. And they all breathed in unison, like... What? I swear to God, bro. <laughs> and they did that like three or four times to the <laughs> point angels? where I was able... I don't know. Angels, yeah. different beings, aliens. I don't know. And that was what kept me from passing out. Next thing I know, it felt like this ambulance took the longest time to finally get to me, but it was a giant grass median. So they had to drive from traffic's going this way, we're going this way, drive over the grass median to come and expect the car. Mind you, the car, the roof of the car, the car roof is usually like right here. The roof of the car is touching my head, so the car is totaled with me in it. So they see my arm, they see that the car is totaled, they can't just yank me out of the car because they said my arm would have fell off. So the first thing that they did um, was put a towel over my face, smash the windshield in, pull it out to be able to <laughs> roll back the top of the damn uh, top of the car like a like Peel a side can can of yeah. Um, and even before that, they had to do the jaws of life to get the the door out because I'm, I wish I had the pictures, man. My mom's um, computer got stolen with the pictures, but the car looked like a steamroller had rolled it over at least once. Right, it was that flat. It's crazy. Anyway, um, once they finally got all of that out, they had to lean me back all the way to the bottom of the seat or the back of the seat to put that whiteboard that they lift you up to put you on a stretcher. Once they lifted me up and put me on a stretcher, which, shit, that was the only thing I remember pain-wise. Mm. That pain I can't even describe. Right. And the EMT's hand, I got a little small-ass hands. The EMT's hand... His finger was my entire grip. So I was gripping his finger like a baby when they finally got me onto the stretcher. That's adorable. <laughs> it really is, though. Like, wholesomely. Like I say it is, right. though. And then, so, hold on. Prior prior to that moving you, you're not feeling pain. You're just in shock. I'm just you're, in shock. You're, your body's yeah, not shutting I'm, I'm off not feeling pain anything, receptors. right. And when I get into, uh, they, they place me in the ambulance, I remember just kind of drifting off and that was it mm. next thing i know hit you with that fan though <laughs> I, no 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 no. i hope not uh <laughs> when i finally woke up my whole arm from my wrist all the way to here oh i see was in a um was in a cast yeah i see a scar back here. right so this is a skin graft actually and it took them i was in the hospital for 15 days it took them a week to finally put my forearm together Mm. So, mind you, my arm is in a cast, but my bones are floating around in the cast. It was hell. Mm. It was hell. I can't even describe how bad it was. I lost, I'm already a skinnier guy. I lost about 10, 15 pounds. Um, yeah, it was, it was hell. It was hell. It was destroyed your hell. arm. Mm -hmm. And they tried to keep me in the hospital longer because they was getting paid off of that. Oh, yeah. Life. Yeah, they so, want you up in there. Um, they let me out the day before my 18th birthday. Damn. Yeah. So Happy it was birthday. the best, <laughs> the best euphoric, the best birthday, the most euphoric <laughs> birthday I've had to date. Yeah. Nothing I don't think, no matter how old I get, will, will beat that birthday because of, you know, surviving that. Right. So, God damn. So that's two accidents within a few years of each other. Two before years. Before age 18 years old. Before 18. And mm -hmm. you're fully rehab that arm back to 100%? Because, I mean, I mean to be a fucking masseuse, nothing dude, you got to be pretty be damn. 100%, bro. No, like, yeah, this that's is, fair. When you think about life, and like we talk about growing and unlearning things, will you ever be 100% when we leave? No. <laughs> bro, listen, I'm 100% now. I, 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 so, yeah, I, I just, guess not. <laughs> I displaced my AC joint uh, uh -huh. snowboarding. Wow. And I went and. Uh, it was non-surgical. They didn't do surgery or nothing. They hit me with some shots, let it heal, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but I remember when uh, I was leaving, I was telling the doctor, I'm like, he's like, Are you, okay, so you're good? And I was like, well, not really. Like, he was like <laughs> sending me on my way after a couple of weeks or whatever. And I'm like, you know, it just sucks that I don't feel 100% walking around. Yep. And he goes, uh, how old are you? This is the doctor. He goes, how old are you? I'm like, 33. He's like, get used to it. <laughs> and it was the that's, realest shit I could have heard. I mess. swear to God, that was the doctor's advice. I'm like, I just don't like walking around and not feeling 100%. He goes, get how old are you? 33. He goes, get used to well, it. Well, that's why. That's how we ended the session. I'm like, fuck, that was brutal. They wow. um they never gave me physical therapy for my arm. Really? Once what? they saw that my metal head took to the arm and didn't get rejected, that was the last I heard from the When you're metal? The, the metal in my arm. I got metal in my arm. Right. I got metal screws and plates and stuff mm. that on this side as well as this side, 
um, and never heard from them again. So when you're talking about massage, massage has been my physical therapist. And when did you, so you didn't, we weren't massaging before that? I didn't know anything about it. Didn't. How did you find out about it? How did you get interested in it? My mom used to give her foot massages and she said, why don't you try massage school? You like giving me foot massages. You might be good at it. That was her, uh, (laughs) her suggestion. And I'm glad that she, she suggested that on top of the fact that, uh, I was in my second year of community college, switched another community college nearby and got with this teacher who was anatomy and physiology teacher. And he, even though I got a C in the class, his enthusiasm for teaching it and his energy behind it uh, made me really interested in it. A good it. So, teacher will do that, man. Um, yo. A good teacher's a big deal. It's easy to highlight the bad ones, but you get a good teacher who's enthused and they gives that enthusiasm do. to you to learn or to be excited about something like that. Shout out to Miss Weir. Shout um, out to Miss Weir. Miss Weir, my second grade teacher in Washington State, was the reason on uh, why I didn't get put on Ritalin as a kid, to be honest. Remember when we were kids oh, and there was a yeah. big hype for ADHD and mm-hmm. ADD and oh, stuff yeah. like that and they was pushing on My food. mom used to hide it in my food. So, uh, <laughs> like, nah. so um, she told my mom because my mom was you know i'm very hyperactive sure. i was a very hyperactive yeah. kid my mom was at wit's end and and was trying to figure out whether because the doctor was suggesting you know we should put him on ritalin it might help him out the teacher miss weir said that scott doesn't need ritalin he's not adhd so your birth name sky huh your no, name's sky skyler for Skyler. Oh, Skyler. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sure Skyler doesn't have uh, ADHD. He just learns differently, right? And I know how to teach him. Um, That's beautiful, by the way. And when she said that was the only reason on why my mom decided to not put me on anything. Right. Of and sometimes that's all it takes, that's right? It so takes. It's, it's just as easy to go the other way mm-hmm. when a teacher's like, I can't handle him. Right. He needs something, mm-hmm. you know? So it's quick to happen. Mm-hmm. Shout out to her. Shout out to Miss Weir. Good teacher. Changed my life. Saved my life. Because so who you, knows what that would have done for my head i definitely wouldn't be the person i am today because i know a lot of people that's to this day kind of brain dead off the fact that they yeah. took riddling ass kids. yeah for real because it was an experiment but what were you gonna say i'm sorry uh <laughs> well <laughs> how, when, i know you're vegan vegetarian i'm moving into veganism man okay when yeah. did you start vegetarian 2016 and i started because i was, yeah, that's what I was just gonna ask tired you. of being freaking insatiable being hungry mm. i feel like you see this uh Marvel lost the right to the use. Not, no, I'm sorry. Let me back up. They lost their copyright over the term superhero. No, I didn't know they had a copyright. Yeah, so because they made it up, and I guess them, I don't know if they well, had no that. one listened. Well, yeah, they did. No one could use that term. I so, like, like did, you ever said see, did you ever watch The Boys? Yeah, I love Yeah, them. well, what do they call themselves? Soups. Yeah, why do you think that is? No way. Yeah, dude, you can't call yourself a superhero. Like no way. Bro. Well, you you couldn't from like no, 1967 till Which now. Which is interesting because you could say it's like it's an adjective, super, and then the noun, hero. And like to be fair, like yes, while they did create the term, like it's become a yeah. broad yeah, thing, it's, it's, right? Yes. Like it's a genre now. Right. So uh yeah, so like uh, as of like the other day, Anyone can use that term. Like it's it's in the public domain. Well, I'm officially a superhero then. <laughs> I'll put that on paper. Let me see if I got this. Is uh, have you seen this mic? I have not. So this is uh, you know, memento mori. It's the Latin phrase for remember we must die. Hmm. Memento mori. It's like remember we must die. It's one of my favorite things because it's like some people look at that as morbid. I look at that as motivating. You know. And this is actually a little bit. Say of Say one ex- more time. Memento mori. What does it mean? It's like, remember, you must die. Remember, you must die. Okay. Basically. Okay. okay. Um, this is a little bit of an extreme version of it because I like to think about it a lot. Uh, some would say I might maybe hyper-focus on my mortality, but not in a morbid way, in a way that's like, hey, let me live because I may die at some point. Mm-hmm. And this is the weeks of your life broken down into checks, check boxes, right? And this is broken down to 86 and a half years, the average human lifespan. And you're supposed to fill out all the weeks you've lived. So then you really see how little time you have left. Wow. It's pretty, it's pretty that's beautiful. Deep, yo. It's oh, deep. You filled it out. So I filled, so that's interesting. I filled out one year, okay. which is 52 weeks, but there's no marker to mark a year. So I want to just mark something that, cause I'll lose track. Did they, how, hold on. Did they not make 52 dots? Like the one fucking row? No, or? they did 50 across. I know. Come I know. Guy. T- agreed. So I'm not a you, designer, but just... maybe I am. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just going to draw a line and then do 52 more and then draw a line and do 52 more. That way I can count so I don't lose track. You said, okay, where's the line at? 
I haven't drawn it yet. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna draw a little line, right, for each year. I, okay. No, I think that's a good idea. So, so you color them in for the for the days for and the, for the we, weeks that you've lived. So every week that passes, I fill another one in, and I'll see if I live an average human lifespan, how many weeks oh, I have. Oh, so every dot is a week. Yes. Oh. So this is 52 weeks. This is my first year. So I got to do enough to, to get to 35. That's deep, man. Yeah. So, oh, so, it's double-sided. I'm looking. Like, so it's, yeah, it's like 160 it's years. If I mess up or, yeah, die or somebody <laughs> else, you know. What about, oh, so it's 86 years one way? 86 and a half years right here. You Eight sure? Weeks. What about, um... Pretty yeah, sure. I, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah you're probably down. right. If that's Why don't one. you do something to celebrate every every year? Not like, not just like your birthday, yes, but something <laughs> yeah. like... Because that's, that's a pretty, I think that's a really, really cool thought. It's interesting. I mean, so really look, cool. I've told some people about it, and it, like, scares people. You know, yeah. they're like, don't do that. Don't put that up. You know, it's just funny because it's like, this is for me, yeah. okay? And I'm not telling you to hang it up. And one of the reviews was like, I really like this for me, but my dad's 72, and I didn't want to hang it in the living room. But it's like, at the same time, it's like, it might be good for him to realize. Mm-hmm. Or if he doesn't, I just feel like people are so constantly avoiding the fact that we'll die that we don't live our lives accordingly, you know what I mean? You know what they should do? They should make another one that's like that, but it's basically something that could represent like Earth time that's elapsed, basically, and you can see how much we're all just a fucking drop in the bucket. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Like yeah. as far as like all time, time yeah, you you almost don't Earth. exist as far as how much time has been no, and how much time radar. will be. You're mm-hmm. like a blip. Not even. It's wild. Yeah, yeah. But the the wildest thing about it all is that. So how do y'all feel about? Um, reincarnation and, and coming yeah. back and all of that. Oh, I mean, scary. reincarnation is a cool <laughs> idea. I mean, especially like if they do like punishment reincarnations too. It goes both ways, kind <laughs> of a deal. But then it's like, how do you determine like what's a shitty thing? Are we doing shitty versus good? Like to be a cockroach is being punished, or <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like what? What? How does it? I think when I because I feel like at this point. We are this. This. This is hell, right? The hell is is being reincarnated, not knowing that you existed at all, Interesting. right? And the aspect is that if we are multidimensional and we don't die because we are energy and energy can't be created nor destroyed, right? That's the case. Then we are reincarnated into this, and this is what this shit with the elites is going on right now, right? We are reincarnated, and this is really the metaverse, right? And the internet that they're trying to get everybody locked in on with this digital universe shit. They're doing pretty good. Is the inception of it, right? The way to break this metaverse aspect is to vibrate to such a degree where you don't come back, right? And Nirvana. Right. But but there's also depending on the person and in and, and, and the bloodline, because it's a bloodline thing too. And that's one of the elite things that the elites move by is bloodlines. Um, that there is, and I was going deep into this shit. There are some of these people who are not necessarily people, right? Or human. Um, and there are different type of uh, humanoid, alien, extraterrestrial, whatever you want to call them that have been here and feel like a lot of people, whether we're talking about from all different races, religions, spaces all over the world, mix in between that. And a lot of us never really wake up to what we're really here for, right? Our purpose, our actual purpose. And I feel as though the elites keep us in that space of keeping this vibration so low that a lot of people really never dwell into themselves to find out. So we keep coming back. Right. Yeah, I've heard that they yeah that, that that they don't want you to uh, like achieve self enlightenment. And I think that's interesting that because why would they spend so much time, money, and effort, focus for years, decades, centuries to keep us into a space where we never recognize who we are and where we're coming from? Mm. They know something about us that obviously we don't, right? And I think that's interesting in relation towards you talking about like we're only here for a blimp and stuff like that. I think <laughs> they said that we, um, they have recognized that they say we live in some type of uh, simulation. I don't know. That's a theory for sure. No, that's, that's the, the CIA has documented that. That's a documented CIA thing. Well, I don't know that it's provable. 
wouldn't they be in the simulation? That's too? what I'm saying. But that's that's what I mean about the whole thing about it. I think it all. we're in a simulation. I believe that. It, well, that's what I the metaverse would be. That's, that's what, what the I'm metaverse saying. is. But they're not. They're not. Yeah, they're not incongruent. Right. Because they, they, they if we are together. spiritual beings having a human experience, that would make sense. And that's what I'm saying about them understanding the fact that we have control over the simulation if we chose to. Right. And Maybe. we are, well, because we are what makes their plans go. Because without us, their plans can't go. That's the reason why they have to do this thing called the revealance of the method with all these TV shows and, and movies and, and music. They're showing you what they want you to have transpire, not what is actuality, right? right. And even if we think about like the Matrix, the Terminator, all this, that, and the third, I found out recently the Matrix... Is a documentary. No, no, no. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> the Terminator is the prequel to the Matrix. I didn't know that. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wait, that's, that's like an official thing or something? So the, no, the, this is a thought thing. No, I no, think. no. Dead ass. Did you know that the person that wrote, not, not the Wachowski brothers now who are the sisters, they stole that. But Which also her name is, is crazy. right. Sorry, Sophia Stewart is the lady that wrote the Terminator and the Matrix. Same person wrote both of those. It's a black woman. Yeah, I did not yeah. know that. Yeah, Sophia Stewart is her name. Well, that's gas. That makes it shit ten times tighter. It's wild. Wait, she wrote both, both are what? great. Both she, are great, by the way. She wrote the Terminator. Wait, she what wrote the Terminator and the Matrix. Really? They took it and made it in a Hollywood movie. Gotcha. They stole it from right, her. Right, right. She's the person that wrote well, it. Well, one of the things that's interesting about the internet huh. that you mentioned is one of the theories I like about the simulation is. Uh, a, that there's an un, an infinite amount, basically, mm -hmm. right? So that's the multiverse. Mm -hmm. And that why would why are we doing this? What's the point of this simulation? And one of the theories is they're the the whatever the futuristic people or <clears throat> humans or AI is, mm -hmm. it's trying to figure out its inception. Mm -hmm. So now we're in this timeline where internet was created because mm -hmm. that's the birth of it. Mm -hmm. And it's trying to figure out how it got to where it's at type of thing, you know? One of those interesting theories. And the bloodline thing's interesting. The bloodline thing for me is is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a skeptic. That's who I am as a person. Why? Uh, what makes you skeptical? I guess it's a protector part of me. Gotcha. You know? Uh, I feel... Uh, I'm just hypothesizing. But I, I, I do think it's me... To, it's to protect my vulnerabilities to be skeptical. And, and And I just... Good question, though. That is a good question. I think you should switch skepticism with caution. Discernment, yeah. Because caution and discernment, yeah, mm -hmm. two different things. People that are skeptical are looking for everything to go wrong with it on why not to mm -hmm. believe in it or why not it's, it's not valid or why mm -hmm. it's not a good thing. Somebody who's cautious or has discernment is somebody who is open to the idea that it's probably some bullshit. Decision. Not even just that. But letting, letting your... Your soul, your your purpose, and, and, and whatever guide you into letting the energy be the energy, that's what I think about when I do massages. When I do massages, in order for me to have these same experiences, I have 531 five-star reviews, by the way. Yeah. In order for me to have these same similar experiences, no matter who the person is, whether gay, straight, transgender, black, white, fat, small, midget, fat, like, it doesn't, it doesn't I said fat, <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter. It's an energy thing, right? It's a discernment thing. And I could have every reason on why it could go sideways. They look at me differently because I'm black or I'm a guy. So they, they're definitely already skeptical or I'm going in their home. So that, sure. that is their, that is that whatever bullshit is that, that it's is their shit. That, that has yeah. nothing to do with Agreed. me. Right. I think, I think it's a good, I think it's a good reframing because to be skeptical. No, no, no. What you're saying. Oh, okay. It's, okay. It's changing that out for yeah. a more caution. Yeah. Because, I guess you're right now that I've, I've never really looked at it, but now that you're saying that, it's like skepticism has an energy with it that mm. is negative, right? Like you're saying, it's like... It's pessimistic. There, yes. There's a saying that I heard that what's the best that could happen? Mm -hmm. And I Ooh, love that. I like that. It's such a yeah, simple it's, it's thing because nice. everyone does the what's the worst that could what's happen. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, what's the best that could fucking happen, you know? True. Which is a nice reframing too. Damn. Yeah, I'm glad you like that one. That's so simple, but it's, yeah. it's just like when people ask me, I've recently changed this in the last few years. I just started thinking when people are like, how are you? Instead of saying I'm good, I'm great, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm I'm super, or whatever the case is, all of that seems more so uh, conditioned responses. Yeah, nicety. Right, yep. as opposed to how you actually want to be. So I started to say I'm grateful when people ask how I am. And by doing that, 
I get a lot of a lot more of a response than if I was to say I'm good, I'm okay, it's I'm a fine. Fire answer. Thank you. And because you, you mean it though. I do. That's the thing. If you were just saying but, it, you, people could tell. But I started to say it just not so much just to say it, but we got to recognize that we are computers are copied from us, right? They understand we are organic machines that go by habits and conditioning, right? And if you notice with the media and TV shows and all this stuff, everything is aimed towards keeping your vibration low, right? So it makes sense to why people are so negative and think so negatively about themselves in general because that's kind of the energy is constantly pushed out to people, right? So if we're conditioned in that space, we have to learn in order to uncondition, we have to condition ourselves by saying the things that right. we want. And, and one of the things that does bug me about that, how are you, <laughs> is it's a lot of times they don't even care, right? So you, <laughs> you, know, so you yeah. actually giving an answer like that yeah. changes it up from just this programming. Yes. Because what frustrates me about it is like, bro, you don't care. <laughs> like, so, you know, sometimes people will go, hey, how are you? And I know they're just saying hi, right? right. We're passing in the fucking right, hallway. Right, 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 right. So it ain't a real question. We're not sitting at lunch. You know what I mean? Genuinely asking We're passing. And they'll go like, hey how, hey, how are you? And then I'll say, good, thank you. I don't ask how they're doing back. Because mm. at this time, it's not real. Mm. I can tell. So I'm skipping the niceties. So that's an interesting way of skipping the nicety while also giving a real answer. And like you said, the feedback from that has probably been a lot more real. Well, I would say, don't even ask them like you're right. You don't have to ask them. You can say thank you for it. One of the things I say also, I say thank you for asking. Right. And it it brings validation to me regardless if they feed into it or not. Yeah. Because I would want that same response if somebody asked me how I am. Right. Right? Um, and I genuinely mean it even if it's just in passing and it's that fast thing. But the gratitude situation, I started saying it to get myself to believe it. Because right. you have to, if you say it to yourself enough, if you say a lie enough, it'll become true. Just in the same way you tell the truth enough, it'll become law for you. You know what I mean? So I think a lot of people are walking around very ungrateful because they don't say it to themselves. They don't say it out loud. You can say it in your head, and that's great. Yeah. But saying it out loud is like down this even, yeah. reinforcement because we, we are taught a lot of these <laughs> negative things, again, that's going into our subconscious. So we got to subconsciously condition ourselves into being grateful. So yeah. by saying it constantly eventually you'll believe it. And they've actually done scientific studies on gratefulness. Yeah. Like Andrew gratitude. Huberman will talk about it. Gratitude mm -hmm. lists. Like people who, you know, no matter how in-depth they are, mm -hmm. if you're doing a, right three things you're grateful for down. Mm -hmm. It could be that you have a mouth and two eyes. Right. Or like you whatever could get up and it, talk and yeah, just look. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, um, it's apparently proven to somehow wire us to be, in, you know, happier or like more pleasant or because whatever the fuck. gratitude is a space of being that when I feel like people are looking, like, I just want to be happy. Well, people don't ever really find happiness because they really never find that. gratitude. Mm. If you're always grateful for even the smallest things, then you'll find happiness in everything, right? Do That's you, what a lot of people do. Do you think do. that you can be grateful at the exact same time as being, like... Angry or frustrated? Yeah. Yeah. Because... If you find, again, there's, it's always, no matter how, like, again, these two car accidents, the worst things that's ever happened to me have become the biggest blessings in my life, mm. right? But that's only because it's the perception of it. It's always perception versus perspective. And they constantly keep us with this perception of things versus what the perspective could be, because the perspective is what you view it as mm -hmm. versus the perception of what things actually are, right? right? And I feel as though... Yeah, you could find gratitude in every fucked up moment. Right. Every single bad thing that happens. Like I said, these two worst things that's ever happened to right. me that I could be like, damn, man, like, I wish I could do a push-up. Matter of fact, when this happened with the accident, I never thought I was going to do a push-up again. I never thought I was going to look normal, let alone this looking like it is. And instead of wallowing in that, following in that, staying in that, because it hit. And mm -hmm. I got to experience real depression for the right. very first time. Prior to that, I used to think, yeah, depression is some bullshit. Uh-huh. That shit is real. <laughs> and I found out it's not just a mental, it's a spirit. Mm. Depression is an actual spirit. So mm. in the same way that we attract the spirit of gratitude by saying it, by believing it, by being it, gratitude only uplifts, depression only brings you down, right? 
So when people identify as like, yeah, they told me I got chronic depression or I have this crying, that's chronic anxiety order. If you identify with those things, that spirit becomes part of you without you really knowing it. Interesting. That's I why like I that. never identify because I go through depression. I go through depression. Me too. Everybody but I, does. I live. I I reject it though. Like Bro, you have I to. just I just believe like we all, as a human, you have to feel every emotion. I, I, basically almost at all times yes. but like sometimes you're supposed to fi- feel sad you because are. you saw something sad or right. what you experienced something shitty right and then you need to just sit in that and live with it for a little while like it's not like the worst thing ever like we can't be happy all the time if you were happy all the time you wouldn't be happy all the time because you wouldn't be able to recognize <laughs> Yo, happiness so anymore you there have to fucking difference. there is a difference though between being sad rightfully because of life right. and being depressed I'm sure, but I, I mean, disagree. depression hits you us know, all for disagree. different reasons. Yeah, I agree I with everything like, you you're just saying. Be a, me too. Both of you guys, so right. let me just hit on both of y'all because yeah. y'all are on point with this. When you said to feel, a lot of us don't want to feel. And no. that's why I realize nothing a lot good. of us, yeah, or not even just nothing but good, but we don't want to feel the bad. That's what and I'm I saying. think about with the health aspect of people, people don't want to be healthy. They just don't want to feel bad. That's, that's why majority of people don't take care of themselves. They just want to do whatever will keep them from feeling bad in the moment. As long as they don't have to deal with it, they won't change it permanently for it to be a lifestyle thing. So to go into the depression thing, how many people you know, if I think about what I've been doing with the thousand push-ups a day and shit. Which a thousand push-ups a day is what you've been doing. I'm proud what? of that. Yeah, you should be. A thousand push-ups a Damn. Day. Yeah, daily. Yo. Damn. That's if you a think lot. about it, it is. That's but it's not. Lot. It is, but it's not. It's, Dude, it's if I was like, I'd do 100 push ups a day, I'd be proud of myself. I, yo, I'd be I, proud I, of when myself. I was at 100, I was like, that's a big fucking uh, deal. That's a big number for me. But, like, come on, man. But how many people you know can do something like that and be depressed? Depression, the way to really cure depression is to move. Which is so counterintuitive to what you want to do when you're depressed. Oof. Isn't that what's wild? Oof. That's why it kind of touches on it maybe being a spirit or like Oof. in that thing. Because when you're depressed, all you want to do is, is not connect, right. lay in bed, right. not see sunlight, not, move. not work out. Yes. And all you need to do is all them things that you don't <laughs> yes. want to do. Damn, you just affirm the spirit. Yeah, yeah. Sheesh. It very well could be something bigger than just like, yeah, something going on in your brain. Because if we think about... The spiritual level of things, everything is spiritual before it becomes manifested in the third dimensions of what we experience every every you know every day anyway. Because if we think about it, on well, some real shit, ninety nine percent of all our experiences are shit we can't really touch and they're intangible anyway. We breathe to survive. We can't see our breath unless it's cold. You know what I'm saying? You think about shit all the time. You can't see your thoughts. You can't see your you know your 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 consciousness. And these are all the things that make our life purposeful on top of like the way our bodies move. If we, I've really, like I did a, a shroom trip recently, yo. And I came into understanding that we don't have any control over our bodies. Everything runs under systems. God itself is the top system. Perfect. Simple. Right? Perfect. Lily said That's what's crazy. Our lungs, yep. the temperature, mm-hmm. the, the, the digestive system, all the different bacteria, everything that's going on, we have no control, no control over. over. Nope. And it's all working in perfect harmony. Yeah. I mean, the body is so incredible. Right. I'm glad. So I, did, I wasn't sure about your take on the spiritual. You mm-hmm. know, I, because I'm, uh, there's a part of me that's cautious. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> look, he did the switch. He did the switch. Because, because there's a big part of me that's cautious. I have been reluctant to go into the spiritual side of things mm-hmm. while also like, having very powerful mushroom trips mm. and going to do ayahuasca in Peru with shaman, right? Mm. I've done these things and still had this caution about it where I go like, yeah, maybe it was spiritual, but maybe it was just like, you know, who knows? Maybe it was just brain chemistry, right? Mm. It's, it's interesting, but the, um, the, the spiritual side of things has been tougher for me to get into, but I have slowly through therapy and through, uh, psychedelic uh, journeys and 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 things like that ceremonies with shamans you name it so I, deep. I, i've i've started to slowly understand that more have you read the book the body keeps the score mm-hmm. you know about this tell me about so it so it's basically just the idea that trauma is stored in your body yeah you've heard that yeah right i deal with it right that's why that's why i'm glad i'm talking to you because so so five years ago uh I, I was going to say if you asked me, to, but someone basically told me about this book five years ago, six years ago, mm-hmm. 
I wasn't even in a place where I wanted to read it. Right. I'm like, no. <laughs> I was molested as a kid, right? That's not stored uh, in my body. That's how I feel, right? That's how I felt. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, no problem. Wow. I, I own it. I think that there's a lot of power in saying it. Damn. Only because a lot of people what's happened to, they don't say it. They don't. And that's because they're still vulnerable there, yeah. and I get that. But the only people who are protected by not talking about it is the perpetrators. So I own it, like, a lot. Like, I'm like, hi, I was molested. They're like, it's a Starbucks. Just sit down. <laughs> you, know I mean? you know how much power that gives you, though, bro? That's what I'm like, saying. That literally I, I, gives you dude, a superpower. Because agreed. so many people, not even just from that aspect of right. hiding, a lot of men are yeah. very ashamed oh, of yeah. sexual traumas and stuff like yeah. that. And for any man, especially somebody as strong as you, I look at you, I look up to you in a way. Uh, somebody you. as strong as you, very welcome. Somebody as strong as you to be able to own that and use it to your yeah. advantage, that showcases that the real strength in everything is vulnerability. Yes, mm -hmm. that's the superpower. Mm -hmm. So, because people say, you know, I don't want to be vulnerable because someone can use it against you, right? Mm -hmm. And I get that. Mm -hmm. Like, I super empathize with that, you know? Mm -hmm. Here is as vulnerable as I am, you're yeah. susceptible to being wounded. Right. But it's almost like, is it a vulnerability if I know you can't hurt me with it? Ooh. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's like, at that point. yeah, at that point, it's like, this is just a fact. It's a shield. This is just a fact. That's what happened. And then right. it's like, here, do what you want with it. You can Ooh. try to throw it in my face, but how could you? I think the superpower comes out of, it can either be a wound or a superpower. And the wound comes from, once it's out there, allowing people to twist it and make you feel bad about it. Yeah. The only person that can make you feel bad about it is you. Right. Or make you feel good about it is you. Yeah. Right. And it becomes a superpower when you own it. And you use it in a way to not only grow, but use it to shine light to help other people through yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And think, that right there is power, yeah, bro. That is power. Super, super power. And that's what I try to do with all my shit. Mm -hmm. I go through shit and I go, hey, this is what I went through. Because mm -hmm. I, I would want people to say it to me. Yeah. I'm curious. You know, I want to yeah. know how people got where they got, what's up with them, how this went. Yeah. You know, I've been through some shit and I like talking about it. You know, I'm like a broken record about it. But I said all that to say that I, uh, I wouldn't have been able to read this book because it's about trauma being stored in the body. Damn. And... At this point, it's actually a book I own now, and I'm about to read. Mm. So that's my, I, I can see my own growth mm. in the, like, woo-woo, mm -hmm. right? Because to me, that was woo-woo. In the woo-woo. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that was just woo-woo, you know? I'm like, nah, bro, it's not how it works, you know? They're muscles. There's not any conscious material there. It's like, it's not, but who knows that? No one knows where consciousness arises, and if my toe is more conscious than my, you know, the Cartesian <laughs> theater? There's this idea that we're in our heads, our our, our because our eyes happen to be here, mm -hmm. we think that we live in our heads. Mm -hmm. When we think of our, we close our eyes, think of your feet, they're down here. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, no, they're not. Mm -hmm. They're down there compared to your eyes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we don't live in here. Mm -hmm. This is our processing center, mm -hmm. right? But we don't live up there. Our right. consciousness could be throughout. It's our whole, it's our whole, Ex it's yes. our aura. And I'm, I'm starting to come over to that. Bruh. And so I've seen videos, even back when I didn't really <clears throat> believe, right? I've seen videos of people getting a release mm. and weeping. Mm. I mean, weeping. Emotional release. Yes, yeah. emotional. I have those all the time. Which is crazy to me. Yeah. Even seeing the videos, I'm like, yeah, they're paid or something. Yeah. This is a fucking scam. <laughs> because I'm like, emotions to me were in the head, mm. right? And then the body stuff's in the body. They're mm. separate. Mm. There's that that separation, that, mm. that dichotomous thinking that Disconnect. humans do. Yeah. And to, to try to, to start to break that down feels good, man, because I'm in this certain type of therapy and he'll ask me uh, often, you know, how, how do you feel in your body? And I'm like, I don't feel anything in my body. And mm. now, I, I, which is sad, right? But he's like, perfect, that's the answer then. He doesn't push, right. but we're trying to get me more in touch with my somatic side yeah. because as a protector part, I intellectualize mm. to not feel. Mm. As most men do. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, intellectualizing is not bad. Yeah. But if you use it as a way to not feel, which I didn't even know I was doing. Right. I had cut off sensations from my body because mm. of probably that molestation. And I, I was stuck in my head for so long. I'm still stuck in my head trying to work on getting back in my body. But mm. um, the, the idea that some type of emotions can be stored in the muscles and tendons yeah. and I, I just it's really hard for me to grasp that concept wow okay so i'm so glad we're having this conversation because um <clears throat> with a lot of I'm, I'm always kind of mind blown on how people are so disconnected from themselves um and they allow themselves to get to a space where they become super overweight and all of these chronic issues come to play and it's like i'm mind blown because i'm very much so ingrained in my body Right, I'm not good with chronic pain. I'm not good with ignoring things. Because um, your body's a data point. 
a huge one. But but only because I chose for it to be. Because when you're talking about the disconnect, the mental mm-hmm. disconnect, I feel like that's the mass majority it's of common. people. Isn't that it crazy? is so common. Yeah. And it's one of the reasons we gotta why walk people, around in these things. Yeah, it's one of the reasons on why people don't decide to get massages because <laughs> they're fine enough. That they don't. Fine. They don't even. They're not they aware mm. because they don't move. Mm. And with this push-up journey, these ninety-day challenges I've been doing lately, that's gotten me to where I've gotten body wash, which I'm proud of. The amount of mental growth I've gotten has been exceptional. It's like I've grown more mentally than I have learning mm. about a lot of things I that's learned involved. on the internet. Mm. All right. <laughs> A lot of the stuff I've learned in school, even it's just on par in the same way that we're having these conversations where we're having these synapse connection connections right now. It's the same way because it's this instantaneous gratification after going through what our brains are supposed to grow through is our brains work off of trials and um, successes. If we, we our brains are going to go through the trials and as we get the successes where our synapse connections are made and our brain, our brains grow and our, our connections, they say our brains actually uh, vibrate. No, our brains operate on 11 dimensions. I don't know how true that is, hmm. but I wouldn't doubt it either. Just on yeah, the simple fact that, about the brain. right, that when you, when you trip, when you go on these trips, when the last trips I've had, my consciousness has shifted over these different dimensions, planets, movie scenes. It's so crazy it's how my last trip was, man. And beyond that, seeing like physical manifestations of everything being in movement mm-hmm. and stuff like that. It, it really is deep how, how deep your consciousness goes yeah. when you allow it to go. And so the fact that I wanted to applaud you on being aware of not only just your traumas and how they've affected you, but how now you're willing to do the work in order to get yourself right to where you need to be. Yep. That's huge, man, because Thank a lot you. of people go their whole lives knowing that, aware of it, but too afraid to just go and just tackle it, yeah. thinking that it's going to be such so much more of a challenge than just doing it. Yeah. And then when you do it, you realize, damn, I should have did this a long time mm-hmm. ago, and I'm grateful that I did it Yeah. every time. Not only is it not overwhelming, you feel lighter yes. after having yes. that healing. You know? Yes. And that's all I ever want to do is be better. It's like I'm low-key addicted to it. I, I made the joke the other day. High-key, because I am too. <laughs> <laughs> I made the joke the other day at work that I don't have any hobbies. And my friend and coworker said something to me that was so sweet. And he was just like, and he meant it. He was like, he's like, are you kidding me? You have the best hobby of all. I'm like, what's that? He's like, self-improvement. Yes. He's like, and what's cool about that hobby is it could be anything. Yes. It spills out into all this. Everything. Now, it's not as simple as like I play flag football or mm-hmm. I'm in the softball team, mm-hmm. you know? Because mm-hmm. those guys, it's a clear, obvious hobby. Mm-hmm. And also, like, these conversations, I can't have them with anyone. Right. As you know, once you start, like figuring stuff out or trying to figure stuff out even you most men especially men that's why i feel so comfortable around f- feminine energy i you know uh, same yeah it's just because they're <laughs> they're more accept bro i got i'll get call- listen bro i'll get called gay for liking flowers like Are you, serious? you know what i mean i'm just saying i came from that crew of people i understand you know what i'm saying like exactly i grew up where it's just like bro that's, that's not that's what we too do sweet yeah. yeah yeah and it's like bro who don't like flowers man i couldn't even like flowers i'm like loud that's you weird, know bro Nah, and, and it's funny that you're saying that because talking about the black community, fuck. Um, I feel like it's more concentrated in black folks when you decide to allow yourself to be more gentle. And I was always this way. I was always, I would never try to be hard, not a thug, not yeah. a gangster, not try to, just not from that vibe. And I never tried to do it. And whenever I did try to be in that vibe, it felt so dis disingenuous to me fuck everybody else it felt so disingenuous to me so where i every time i say something or do something i'm questioning myself like what the fuck did you just say or do why would you do that i'm saying that shit to myself in my head that's beautiful though some people don't have that voice it's crazy because they say more than like 40 50 percent of the population doesn't have an inner voice right so yeah that is kind of scary (laughs) and i heard and i heard one time that like you know how to find your authentic self Mm. sometimes it's easier to notice when you're not being it right Damn. so that was gas too for me i heard Damn. that one time where it's like how do i know when i'm being authentic it's like well sometimes if you're early on you might not know but what you will know is when you're doing the thing that your body goes well, you know. yeah yeah what, what's wrong in with bed you later at night and you're like that wasn't you you know yeah. that's where it's easier so then again it's like the unlearning you can right. start cutting trimming and pruning right because it's the essence of you right 
is this eternal right. goodness. You Literally. Know, this compassionate, we come curious from the source. witness. Yes. Yeah. And I feel like every person has it until they don't have it. It's just like you have your health until you don't have your health. You have your your mental acuity until and, the world and expansion. It. No, not until the world crushes and until you allow that to happen. Because again, if I think about my trauma is happening for the age of 18, most people I know personally would not be who I am today because yeah. of it. They would be so much lesser than and worse off, not because that's who they would become, because that's what they're destined for. It's because that's who they choose to be. I chose to want to be better after something like this because I know after somebody getting into an accident like that or... It's easy to not be good. Not even so much it's easy because it's not easy, but it's common. Right. A lot of people I know that go through trauma, they allow their traumas to be their excusitis yeah. on why they can't do anything anymore. Right. And I had that flash in my head when I had that depression moment. And I'm like, yo, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to look normal again. I'm not... And I cried for about a you know 25 minutes. Yeah. But after the hour passed, I didn't sit in that. Yeah. A lot of people sit into that spirit, and that spirit becomes so deeply attached to them Blended. <clears throat> that they don't know how to, dis, uh, to disconnect from it. Right. Funny enough, somebody had made a, a, a statement saying, your habits start off with the width of a spider web and over time become as thick as a tenth of steel. And I've been thinking about that shit a lot lately with some of my bad That's habits. Nice. Because the good habits, like me being this genuine, authentic, uh, authentic <laughs> authentic there it is <laughs> it's authentic uh authentic person um it's so easy for me to connect to people so much so that it's weird for me not to connect to people yeah. right in the same way with my bad habits with smoking weed in the beginning it was something that you know was for my head injury and for you know to just feel cool and stuff like that and to vibe with it and learn myself now it's become more of like an habitual, like I do it daily, multiple times. Like it's something I just do mm -hmm. and it's a normalized thing and I need to break away from that. I get that. You know what I mean? I totally get that. It, it, it's about like not saying, again, getting away from the binary thinking. It's not like, okay, weed's bad. Right. I should be off weed. It's like, right. well, my relationship to it is yes. what I want to look at. Yes. Right? It's not even the amount. It's yes. not even frequency. Right. It's what is my relationship to it? Am mm. I doing this because I want to be high right now and mm. I'm making that conscious choice? Or mm. is this a habitual routine? Yes. Same with masturbation. Yeah. Same with whatever. It's like, if this is a routine, <laughs> you know what I mean? It doesn't mean like, oh, I'm helplessly addicted to jerking off and smoking weed. Yes. But if I'm doing them, so it's to not to feel that. or to avoid or to, you know what I'm saying? Because everything, those are the two things. <laughs> Those are literally the two things, <laughs> the things yeah, of that most men I feel like are breaking right now. Well, is or, or or drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, what were you gonna say? Or what? Well, just that, just that men. A lot of them are dealing with that yes. and won't say it, At right? Because they don't want to say I'm addicted to porn or addicted to masturbating. Bro. Let's not call it that. Then let's not make it so heavy. Bro. Let's just say your relationship to it right now is it's a little skewed. complicated. Yeah. yeah, it's a little complicated, and it really all comes down to. We're like, pro-masturbation and pro-weed. It's yeah, just about looking at your relationship it. to it, your attachment <laughs> to these things. And is it working you or are you doing it because you enjoy it? Are you using it as a tool or, or is, is it, it using you? Yeah. yeah. And a lot of the times, I mean, when we look at porn and stuff like that, there really is no tool to it because it is really just mainly... It's really conditioned people at this point, especially with this OnlyFans burst with these last four to five years and stuff like that. And I'm not against it. You know what I mean? I got OnlyFans, but damn stuff. I'm cool with it. It's fine. <laughs> The problem is, is that it's it's really taking out the connective aspect oh, of yeah. it. It's very transactional now. That a lot of now these young girls are going into looking at these older women as doing this and stuff like that. Is it being a lifestyle? And that these a lot of these young girls want to be that. And the problem is, is that now is the disconnect is that it affects them later down the line because when they are trying to find somebody to just have that vibe with, if they're not all the way cool with that. Right. And you've turned you, off a lot you know, of people. It's, 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 yeah. Yeah, and the that. way they view people, maybe now through a lens of the people they interacted with through that. Strongly. You know what I'm like so they look at guys as, yeah, you know. it's very much so like if he can't do this for me, he's not going to do that for me. He can't provide this for me. I don't really want him. Yeah. That's so it. It's strong, bro. Oh. And then we're not even talking about the kids mix. Kids in the mix? Uh -huh. Can you imagine? This is one of the things. My mom is 65, and I'm, I'm grateful. Even though I'm a giant, hypersexual, big old freak and stuff like that, <laughs> I am so grateful my mom is not on OnlyFans because I love older women and stuff like that, but I wouldn't know what the fuck to do sure. if my mom was out here popping her pussy uh -huh. and doing some wild shit. Don't get me wrong. 
if that's what she want to do, that's what she want to do. But just think about it. Like she's doing it in a way of like, I want to be free and I like feeling sexy and stuff like that. It's, it's, that's a wild thing. Yeah. Think about these young kids now that their moms and parents do it. And even if they make bank and stuff like that, good for them. The psychological component on it is heavy, and it's gonna get heavier as people goes on as it goes on because it yeah. should be out there, out there. Yeah, it's funny because I think about like when like I don't know, uh, your parents would like normally you would catch your kid doing something weird, right? right. <laughs> but for you to catch your fucking parent on OnlyFans or some shit, like, oh, can you imagine? <laughs> that's bro? funny. Can you imagine like for example, I got a, fr- <laughs> I ain't gonna I ain't gonna call her name out. I got a young lady who, and I noticed this with a lot of people that do porn. A lot of people that are very hypersexual, some of the most intelligent, most caring, loving people I've ever met. Just in much, just as much sure. so as there's a bunch of mindless ones that's doing it. Sure. But I found out there's a lot of deep people in Definitely. that space. So that makes me really um, understand that you know a lot of the times that people are very intelligent are very hypersexual people. So I, I see the correlation there. Yeah. But the thing is, is that when you get identified with that, and that's one of the reasons why. I, didn't go into porn when I was building up my massage business because once you get identified with sexuality, the way that sexuality is presented to us is so animalistic and so uh, disconnected from the spiritual aspect of it all that people have a hard time disconnecting you from that identity once you're right. identified with that, man or female, yeah. right? So if I'm doing this massage and even though as great as I am and stuff like that, if I was a big time porn star, I really was serious about that. How serious could they really take me, right. no matter how good I am? Yeah. So I'd rather, if I do do that aspect, and I'm probably not, but if I do do that aspect, I'd like to have a solid foundation. Not there. a definite no, though. It wasn't. It really <laughs> wasn't. Yeah. He left the door open. I caught that, that shit, too. <laughs> With a disconnect, said, these though. thousand push-ups a day are looking <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's but not what. on some serious <laughs> shit, because... I'm not saying that you have to be ashamed of being hypersexual sure. because everybody's dealing with it right now. It's like it's an energy behind. It. I was thinking about this too. This there's an energy presented to the world in the way that because sex is a necessary thing. It's what we do to survive and create and procreate all of that and enjoy ourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. The thing about it though has been presented so transactionally, so animalistically that a lot of like we don't even have bases anymore. Remember when we had bases when it was kissing and then touching and then oh, right. a little bit more and then, yeah. then it went to that? Now it yeah. just goes right to that. Right. That is so like... Now they're just having gangbangs. Yeah, bruh. Right the jump. Like it ain't nothing. Yeah. Like how do you they're build up... they definitely desensitized. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And it's, it's interesting because like so the, the, the separating them between like the spiritual side of it and this animalistic side of it, mm-hmm. sex can be spiritual. Yeah. As I'm sure you know. It's like... It is. Yes, yes. It, it, it's Even like, if you don't want it to be, it is. That's right. the thing about it. Right. Go ahead. Keep on. Right. It's like... Uh, but yeah, that's what it's just, it's in, it intrigues me about it. You've heard of the spirit of eros, it's like the spirit mm. of sex, more like the eroticism. Okay, it's really interesting. I actually watched a documentary about it one time, but I love the intangible, the mm-hmm. stuff that you can't put on paper. Yeah. And when you're having really good, I talk about this way too much, but when you're having <laughs> so really good, when you're it. having really good sex that's connected with someone and intimate and vulnerable, and you're present, like true presence, you can't call it anything but divine. It's it, it's what I'm saying. It's it like is. It, it is. It, it's, but it's, it's so hard to find that. Yes, it's of... super rare. And like you said, it's become so transactional to yes. where it's like it's just the primal, it's just the transactional, yeah. it's just the cheap, yeah, and, and that degrades the whole thing. Well, it ain't then, cheap. <laughs> Where did these chicks making money on OnlyFans? It ain't cheap. It ain't cheap. It's just it, it's a cheap experience, right? Though, because the experience is really kind of it's not an experience. It's right. just a transaction at that point. And if we look at the spiritual aspect of it, like when I go ahead and get down. One of the things I love to do is that I look at it as a lovemaking experience as opposed to fucking. Because fucking, animals fuck. And they don't even fuck. They, they don't even call it mating. I don't even know what they do. They just, they, they do what they do. But humans, on the other hand, can have the, the ability to do that, but also enjoy the experience where it takes them to a higher level of thinking, consciousness, yeah. all of that. Because it's your root shock is right here. And I found out that, uh, the Egyptians used to harness the power of orgasms and put them in crystals and shit like that. So, I mean, let's Come be honest. crystals. You heard it here first. <laughs> ah, yo. But for real, though. Harness it's, um, the power of... Wait. Orgasms. Because or, uh, the power of an orgasm is... 
life giving. It's not even just life giving, but it's like um, if you really had a, a great orgasm, it, it brings you. It, it's it activates a lot of the different parts. Is that of an your orgasm mind. on your neck? Or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> Yo, sorry. Yo, you funny as shit. That was good. <laughs> But now it, it brings you to another level of activation in your brain. So it makes perfect sense, especially if your root chakra is here and that's the place where creativity happens. Right. It makes perfect sense, hmm. right? So you got into massaging, hmm. all right? So now I was telling him, like, don't you do, like, a specific type of massage or a specific demographic? I know that you, like, work with people who, like... I work with everybody. Okay. I work with everybody, but my basis is yeah. What's your what's your give me what's your pitch? Medical massage. Medical massage. Um. So Royal King Touch Medical Massage. Um. We'll link it. Did that. (laughs) Did that to basically differentiate myself outside of just the Swedish, the superficial of oh, I just want to feel good, and that's great because everybody wants to feel good. The thing is, is that a lot of people need actual maintenance on their bodies, right? And most people don't stretch. They don't move. And they're eating bad. So that's a big tri, mm. you know, trifecta of a combination right. that really is destructive towards people. So you're talking about on a spiritual aspect, <clears throat> people's stress and traumas get stored into their body Thank as God we got back at the, yeah, at the at the tension and stuff like that. These knots, these uh diseases. Have you dis-ease. heard of this? I'm not sure. I don't think so. So yeah, people, your emotional trauma, mm-hmm. the theory is, can get stuck in your body and manifest physiologically and physically as a knot in your body. And a- mentally. Interesting, because I'm always self massaging. Like I got like a, it's Super not, great. it's like an off brand Theragun, yeah, and then taint? I have this like. What? What? What is it? <laughs> yeah, I heard, I heard yeah. you can have. I heard you. I, I did hear. Yo, wow. Listen, I, I, I did <laughs> real quick. I did Listen, go down a Reddit rabbit hole once, and I games. heard you can achieve a prostate orgasm through a theragun. Shh, on the I bet you can. It's all, but don't fucking accidentally like hit your balls because like this thing sure. is fucking like. Well, that's part. You of know it. what I'm saying? That's I got the, all the way at the top. Hold on, you'd be better off using your hands than 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 the gun, only because, and that's one of the things I want to teach with people. You gonna teach me how to get a peace spot, peace spot orgasm? No. Oh, bro. okay. My bad. No. Go ahead. I because I don't even play with that. I don't, I <laughs> he said, that hell, in my no. book. hell nah. But nah, what I'm saying is, is like so close. There are things about you touching yourself, not in a sexual way, but in a way that you can feel your musculature, be able to understand where the points are and stuff like that. When you do that you get more connected to your body in general. It makes sense. Because more pe- most people don't touch themselves yeah, outside of masturbation themselves. and yeah. stuff like that. Most people don't feel their bodies, right? And then on top of that, since most people don't feel their bodies and or stretch, most people have no idea what's going on and how they feel. Mm. So when most people do stretch or do anything, it's painful usually, right? Not realizing that that pain is from not moving. And the only way to get rid of that pain, because I used to think the same thing before I really, really got into stretching recently, that if it's painful, you should stop. Well, if it's painful, you need to get rid of the pain by going through it. It's like a signal. It's a signal. It's a signal for if it's a pain that is crippling, whole different experience than a pain that's just like, It's different between an injury and like a, right. Yeah, because I mean, there's definitely, like when I deal with a lot of people who have a lot of back tension, and most people do, um, <laughs> it'll, it, it can, usually it's not, but it can be painful in the beginning until doing it over and over over and over again until you start to see the the muscles start to retain the energy you're giving the technique that you're giving and then eventually it starts to you know release itself right but a whole great experience with a massage just comes down to listening to the body and letting the body guide you Mm -hmm. you can't force yourself into making somebody feel good the body has to tell you that and it's just really coming down to the way that the body feels mm. the more that the body starts to soften up and the person starts to relax because that's why we talk about body you don't have control over your body why do you think people have such a hard time relaxing if they never maintenance their body don't get rid of a lot of that stress and tension that's just sitting in their bodies they can't physically relax no matter right. what they do no matter how much they stretch no matter how much they work out can you over massage Feel like you you probably could yeah but i mean i'm like so i have a softball and yeah. i used to use a lacrosse ball before <laughs> this but like i would basically lay on the thing yeah. right and i would do my entire back which is basically me putting all of my weight besides my feet are on the floor but the rest of my weight off the ground yeah. onto the ball yeah. right and so i'm like going all over the spots hips obviously and and like the buttocks you got like rolling you, you do all that shit yeah. but like at roller like the roll foam rollers are cool but they don't they don't Hit you like I you don't, don't use none of that stuff. I'm I not like saying I wouldn't suggest that. 
there's this young lady who uh, has her own self massaging. They're like bouncy balls, but they're they're called massage balls. They're mm-hmm. called Thera T spheres. T spheres. Right? spheres. Okay. Right? And you talk about great, man. So even if you just got a little bouncy ball and stuff like that, I'm not saying you got to use a tennis ball or anything like that. Those things are kind of on the harder side. Yeah, these but, are hard. But a softball and a lacrosse and ball big, are hard. And these are big. hard balls. The thing about it is, is you want something more so smaller because you can pinpoint areas a lot better right. than if you had something big, right? Like a roller or even those balls. Right. Because of the simple fact that a lot of the areas that we need to get into are really in the crevices between where the muscles connect and stuff like that, the tendons connect right. and all of that. So that's one of the things I would definitely suggest. Getting you a bouncy ball, a T-sphere, mm-hmm. and using that. Because I, I got a video talking about it. I think it's interesting you say that it's like the body tells you, mm-hmm. right? Because... Not to bring it back to sex, but that is when I've the only time I have noticed the body's communicating, and it's not so much here, mm-hmm. right? It's, it's not so much this conscious choice I'm making of right. what to do next. It's right. like the bodies are telling each other. Right. They're having this whole communication, and that's again <laughs> that's when I deep. was just mind and body separated, I never would understand that. Deep. But now I notice that sometimes it's like I'm not really thinking. I'm We're just, just doing. doing. We're in full yes. state almost. Yes. And so I wonder when you go into the massage, you have to kind of make sure you're in a place of like self mm. to be able to get those signals from that body. Right. So that's so deep that you say that because no matter, that's why I love massage so much. Cause it's the only thing that I've ever done. Uh, sex doesn't match it. Smoking weed doesn't match it. No drugs matches it of being able to, no matter what I'm going through to be able to have peace in that moment of letting mm. everything go. I get into a Zen state. Right. And the only way that that can be messed up is if I rush into it. Like if I'm not, if I don't go into it into a smooth way, if I rush into it, then yeah, it'll throw the whole thing off. But if I go into it in a smooth state or just doing it the way that I normally know how to do it, no matter who's on the table, um, the experience is always going to be A1, great, fantastic, no matter what. And it puts me in a space of peace because even if I don't want to work with that person, they'll never know, right? Um, Because it's an energy transfer. So I can't hide if, if I don't like them, but I also at the same time, let all of that go. Yeah, because it's not about what you like. It ain't not. about them. No. It's about me. That's yeah. what I've realized, too. In order to get the best massage that I can to every single person I work on, no disrespect to, per- to the person on the table. I'm not saying fuck them, but fuck them. Because it's got to be about how I feel about things No first matter what, yeah. To be able to transfer that into their experience exactly. on the table. And that's why they always have a great experience. Yeah, I've realized that recently. Hmm. That it's got, it's, everything is about self. Everything is self-reflective. That's been a big model of mine lately as of... As of it all Five so years. Everything reflects back to me. So the more I better myself, the fitter I get, the more I understand myself and how I think and the way that I move and stuff like that, the better it is for not just engaging with other people, but other people feel that, they see that, then it catalyzes in towards them doing for themselves. Because we, our whole lives, want to go and try to tell people like, yo, you should do it like this, you should do it like that. And don't get me wrong, we're coming out of a place of love and and appreciation and stuff like that. The problem is, though, is that people don't want to hear you. They need to see it. They need to see it. And even after they see it, they have to see it at least seven times for them to really make a decision on whether it's going to be something for them or not. But they have to constantly keep saying it. So it doesn't matter how many times you say it. And even if you show them over and over and over, they have to make the decision. Right. And that's what it is for everybody. And that's why when we look at from the macro to the micro of where society is right now, of how it's crumbling... That's happening because that's happening on the inside of a lot of people right now. Yeah. A lot of people are coming into the spaces that you're talking about of being aware of these traumas, being aware of these these issues and stuff like that, ignoring them for so long, but now just coming to a space where it's like, okay, do I want to deal with this or do I not? Because I haven't been dealing with it. Yeah. It hasn't done me this well yet. So how about me dealing with it, seeing how it goes, and then you experience that it's and better for And then that you. internal shit goes external. You know, I had a really heavy mushroom trip one time where I was going to figure out the how to fix the world. Oh, shit. Like genuinely, that was my intention going in. I like that. And all I had written on the paper the next day was love yourself. Oh, simple. That's it. Simple. That's it. Simple. And it's so obvious. Like you can get that in any cheap self-help book or whatever. But I came to it with like from the mushrooms and was like, this is mind blowing. Yep. And I've like 
was chewing on it for a while, and it's like I do find it to be true. It's so true. If everyone was, you know, in stepping in self, capital S, yeah, and leading with that, yeah. the world wouldn't need fixing anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it would it would fix itself because a lot of the problems come from obviously yeah. the self reflective. Like I realized that hate isn't the opposite of love. Hate is misguided love. Because and when you love something or you love somebody, you're obsessed with it. Yeah, they say the opposite of love is indifference, not hate. Oh, yeah. Because you hate, you still got that passion, right. that emotion, that heavy, strong emotion. Yep. You, you fixated on hate. And that's obsessive. Mm -hmm. Whether that's it's obsessive. love or hate, right. it's the same type of energy exactly. where you're obsessed. Yep. Mm -hmm. The opposite of love is indifference. The indifference. Not even so, giving a care in the world. So it. hate is misguided love. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, yeah. Mm -hmm. And... Now that I think about that, because the only person I would give my hate to, which I don't obsess over this person by any means, but anytime this person just comes up, I just despise this motherfucker. You know, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that bitch with a passion. Random. He's yeah. the only person I would say, and I know it's random. Right. I say that because he was the only person I voted for. Nah. And I remember in 2009, we're seeing this, this video. When they were talking about Obama was supposedly going to be the Antichrist, that and the third and stuff like that. Part of me was kind of fe uh, feeding into the, the media saying, oh, yeah, it's racism, racism. But the other part of me was like, nah, it ain't. Something, something's definitely interesting. I don't know what it is, but something's interesting about this little situation, right? And I remember seeing this video. I, I don't remember if I could find it, but it just it was this animation just showing that he's connected to Bush and... And, and all these other presidents and stuff like that. I didn't know at the time what that meant, but it just it, it remained curious to me. So then after voting for him and having the Obama shirts, remember the Obama shirt revolution <laughs> yeah, and shit yeah, like yeah. that? He said all this stuff. And then seeing how he manipulated the shit out of the black community and how none of us benefited from his experience, but everybody was so behind him. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just black people, it was everybody. White people were so proud to be behind oh, yeah. Obama. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? Everybody yeah. was behind that bitch. Yeah. Everybody. more shorts than black people. This is what I'm sure. saying. Like, yeah. yo, black people was hype about it. White people was hype about it. Change. Like, like <laughs> you fucking change, yo. <laughs> but finding out the destruction he did, not just behind, like, okay, so... The drone strikes. Oh, so you know about the drone strikes. With the, the, the seven, every seven hours. Of I keep my head in the sand, so you're at least telling me new shit, oh, so yeah. you can so tell me Obama about it. Obama was smiling over here and just decimating yeah, shit out of other places. He literally <laughs> dropped his... Uh, but that's like every politician. Eesh. Nah, but he did. He did a lot of damage. He did yeah, like he a lot some of... records. He did. <laughs> he, like, and he hit some high scores on that he was, bitch. Uh, he was big into... Um, remember uh, Code Blue? When he was pushing for protecting of the police and mm -hmm. making sure that they they was taken care of because everybody was going after them supposedly, and then him big on the, the the homosexuality shit and he was pushing big on them. He didn't say really anything towards black people. That was one of the things that pissed me off. But also the thing too is that Michelle was not a Michelle. Michelle was Michael. <laughs> You're so, on the belief that Michelle's it ain't, man. It ain't, it ain't a belief, bro. <laughs> you heard I, this. You I heard started, this theory, I started, right? I started. I think I heard someone say it once in passing. Yeah. So, so Joan Hart <laughs> or Joan? No, Joan Rivers. I love who this recently right died. Now. You know Joan Rivers that died a few years yeah, back. The, 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 the comedian, right? Yeah, she yeah, used to talk about great, this all dude. the time. She is great. That was one of the last things that she talked about. Was that damn R.I.P. Joan Rivers? Yeah. Right. And <sighs> if watch you, a stand up, dude. If you don't know, if you look at, if you look at. What is it? Michelle's dick. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's probably bigger than uh, Obama's. Bigger than Obama's, I'm sure. But but uh, what do they call? Is it? It's not forensics. What is the study of of the difference between a male and a female? Gender studies? No, mm. no, no, no. Not, it has nothing to do with their gender, but it has to do with like their skeleton structure and how their skeleton structure is different. Anatomy. It's no. anatomy, and, but it's... Yeah, it's, I don't know. But, okay, that right there is how you can tell the difference between a man and a woman indefinitely, right? And the way that um Michael is set up, he's set up like a dude. Don't get me wrong. Like, I just massaged this Michael. chick who had very broad shoulders like a football <laughs> player, but that was a female. Yeah. It was definitely a female. Um, <laughs> Not that I saw anything, but that was definitely a female. Um, That, on the other hand, I saw this video. I'd never seen it again. Of Michelle, Michelle, 
<laughs> walking down the stairs. You call her Michael. I love walking, it. No, because he called her Michael. Have you? you oh no! See, what you didn't see the? Like I said, him, him doing a speech. Split. Yeah, when he said uh, Michael. I mean Michelle. No how do you, shit. How do you, they don't even sound sonically alike, so you can't even mess that up unless. No, that's something you do in grade school. That's like, what if I'm you're saying. Michael, no, you don't even do that. He's though. like my like, gay lover. I mean Michelle. <laughs> like your Spanish name for like, Michael bro, is Miguel, but your female name I guess nah, would be Michelle. Michael and Michelle. Mike M. They don't yeah, even have the same no, sonic you know, beginnings at right. all. Period. The it's, only way it's really written spe- like he yeah, said it right, that's... Freudian slip, because that's really a chick. I mean, that's really a dude. <laughs> that's really a dude. And um, so the video was them going down the stairs after coming out of some type of courthouse, and you could see the bulge bouncing. <laughs> oh shit! I am not lying. You do you guys remember the whole shit on Ellen when she was dancing? You can see the same thing. You guys don't remember that? <laughs> no, I remember I don't hearing know. about it. Bro, oh, that's what I'm saying. It's right in people's faces, but people. If we look at then to where it is now, <laughs> everything, when I was talking about revealance of the method, <laughs> Hollywood is a completely inverted place. I believe that. Inverted as shit, right? Is that recording? Yes, it is. Okay. And so since that's the case, this whole transgender, that's your third beer, and I'm loving it. Yo, you Fourth. Are... Fourth. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> they, um... Anything that they release on the public, they're already in process of doing for themselves and they've been doing for a long time. So think about this whole hypersexual, no, this hyper push when Obama was in office of the homosexuality push that led into the transgenderism of what we have now. Everything is connected. The point of this whole push of the gay and transgender shit is to become genderless, which leads into uh, transhumanism. They want to eventually have people where when one day I wake up, I feel like a boy, so let me plug in my boy parts. And another day, I feel like a girl, so let me plug in my girl parts. That's what the whole goal of this hmm. whole thing is. If they get us to a point where, again, the, desensit- uh, the desensitization of the sex aspect, which brings us very close and can, on top of the disconnect of male and female, on top of the fact that males are becoming very feminine, females are becoming very masculine, on top of... <laughs> that's one of the things of feminism. Now, women... A lot more women make a lot more money than a lot a lot of men nowadays. Really? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Women are killing it right now. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not, of course I'm not. not knocking. I love that women are killing and making it happen. But with the biological warfare and all the stuff that's happening and stuff on top of the fact that everybody's just so disconnected from themselves beyond everything I just said. Yeah. The whole purpose of all of this is to get people so disconnected to themselves in all those ways that I talked about. That eventually, when it becomes this whole, people got to get the microchip, uh, the neural link thing that uh, oh, yeah. what you call mm. this is talking about. Oh yeah, that's that's what this whole new generation is kind of in the mindset of. That's yeah. why these these kids are gender fluid like they are. Gender fluid didn't exist last generation and the mm. generation. No, before. you're right. You know, like it's cyborgs. And it's hunt. cool to be, you know, like you were saying, a feminine man or like a manly yeah, woman or whatever. Yeah. But like, and I'm probably gonna get myself canceled here. Not that I'm famous <laughs> enough to do that, but like, I don't know, man. Like the whole, it's just, I don't it's know. Agenda, there's something right? here. There's something. It's an agenda. That's I, what I'm talking about. You know what? I keep getting this video. Have you guys seen this video where it's two? I think it's their pelvises. So oh. skeleton of a woman and a man. And, and then there's that ball. metal ball. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Different. I don't fucking know. Dude. Well, either way, like the woman or the man who turns into a woman is never going to have like pass anything yes. through their face. So it doesn't yeah. matter. Yes. Yeah. Doesn't matter. That's what it's I was just saying showing, about, hey, but they are different. different. But that's yeah, what I was saying they are about different. Scientifically, I think everyone agrees. But that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like you can't. No matter how much this transgender shit happens, they can never change their genetic markers of them being men or women. That sure. that'll never change. Right. And no matter how much they're gonna make these uh <laughs> these fake wombs for these transgender men to do this, it'll it'll still never be the same. The yeah. day a woman. That turns into a man who can like beat like someone who's like of that time like uh, that's great like then I'll be like okay well at least they did it that way but I I kind of yeah a woman can never really be or a man can never really be a woman a woman could be a man I think no I think to a point to a point <laughs> no. to a point not that a man was, if man that but like was to a true point. bro then all these lesbians wouldn't be trying to emulate men <laughs> these lesbians like bro look I I probably shouldn't say this. <laughs> <laughs> but I smashed a, 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 a few gay chicks, yo, and and they they like dingling just as oh, sure, <laughs> just sure, as sure. much as these straight that, chicks. Hey man, so oh, yeah. dildos are you know it's they just might like of... it even more if they don't get it as much. <laughs> that's what I'm like saying, a treat, a little, know, special know, treat. Know, a little special treat, a little special treat. Saying this stuff, this stuff's cute. Yeah. 
<laughs> we talking our shit. So we're being care. professional. We're being. We're just humans. Hey, we That's another thing about the different masks. It's like, look, I try to blend mine mm-hmm. to where I'm like. I am who I am, whether I'm at work with my I, friends. That's what I'm talking about. Myself. That's congruency. Right. That's the congruency that's I'm talking about. That's what I try about. to do. And obviously, mm. I can't talk exactly how I talk in any setting, but I'm still me yep, throughout. Bro. You know? There's so one brother you, always going to get with me. It's me. That's, <laughs> and that's to bring it back to the whole thing about what I was talking about with incongruency with most people when we're in the three faces. You don't wear three faces. Right. Your face is the same face. You just change the way that your face is perceived right. in these spaces, but you're still going to have that yep. same face. Right? Yep. Same thing for me. That's the reason on why I fuck with you. Yeah. That, that, that yeah. consistency. Yeah. Congruency. It's going to be me. Yeah. Whether you like it or not, it's mm-hmm. going to be me. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the medical massages, does someone have to be have like a diagnosis to get you or no? No, they no, can no. Just... Um, so when I tell you I work with everybody, I work with uh, kids as young as seven. The youngest person I work with is seven and the oldest person I work with is 97. 97? And he was a World God, War II dang. vet. And um, my whole basis I feel like I break is, it. Nah, I, I that's, what, what, I, that's what I used to think too. Yeah. Um, because that was kind of the first people we started off doing is people that's older. You know what I mean? Um, but I've realized that I would consider myself more so focus based therapy. So if you have an issue with your neck and shoulders and stuff like that, instead of just uh giving you like a full body massage and maybe touching on that my main aim is to work on that until it's done all the while still giving you the massage that you deserve and need right right? all the while going deep and doing the work that you need but you're still coming out relaxed where what i've heard from most people it's like it's a multi-level spiritual experience where some people's they leave their bodies i've had people tell me they feel like they're floating i have people tell me that uh, during the massage, during like the after massage. when it's done, they tell during you. The I got, I got, I got. During the massage or even afterwards, mainly afterwards, but sometimes during. Uh, I got this young lady who tells me she feels like a cat when she gets <laughs> a cat. <laughs> she says she has you a gotta cat pay moment. extra for that. No, she just says she has a cat moment. She feels like she's being a, a stroked like a cat. You got your own like portable table that you yeah, bring or whatever. My table, the sheets, the oils. You play some music it, and shit. Play my songs, my massage songs. Actually. Where the face yeah. goes? Is it just like your a, a whole thing yeah. or like? Face cream? Because my problem with massage, and it happens every fucking time, I get there, I get my face into the thing, mm. and then, like, I don't know what happens, but, like... It's hard to breathe. Breathing is, yeah, it's That like, happens for everybody. That's that's a regular thing. So you got to think about when you're on your stomach like that for long periods of time, all whatever mucus is in your head and stuff like that is going towards the front of your face. Okay. That's why it's so hard. But, no, it, it, that happens to everyone. Right, that's so not just, just not true. Right. No. I was just like, man... That's why uh, it's important to... It really all depends on the person, uh, how you work on it and stuff like that. So that's what you call uh, supine is side up, uh, prone is face down. Right, okay. And um, I have heard of those terms. Yeah, prone prone is what you're usually talking about being on your stomach. But you know what? The way that you usually do that is just uh, just be mindful of when somebody's having that issue. But it's, it happens to everybody. Nobody's in I just suffer through it. And it's a I'll say you nothing. You just got to breathe. You got to breathe. I know, enough. but at a certain point, like, I don't know. My, my They get clogged. Something gets clogged up and because it's of something. And I'm just like, I know. It's uncomfortable, bro. <laughs> it's like, it's uncomfortable. So you, I love massage. Ideally, or do you, you're not doing one massage. You're doing like a... Uh, I do a multitude of different massages. So Swedish, deep tissue, Reiki, which is energy work, Shiatsu, which is finger pressure. Reiki. Um, Damn. Reiki is beautiful. Um... I do a little bit of reflexology on the hands and feet. I do craniosacral, which is rooted to the base of the cranium all the way down to the top of the sacrum and the spinal muscles in between that because a lot of people's issues is their spine. What I'm saying, though, is if people come, can they get one massage? Or I guess it just depends on their needs. Or is it usually like a course of massages? Like no, a- so it's... What do you mean? Explain. Sorry. Like, like, this, could someone just get come and get one massage and get a benefit out of it, or does it need to be a bunch? Oh, well, I mean, everybody's going to get a benefit from every massage I get no matter what. Right. The thing is, is you really, if you really want to get the genuine benefit, yeah. it's just like when you think about when these people going to the doctor and they get these shots, they don't just get one shot and that's it. Right. You know what I mean? They usually have to come back. Yeah. Because it's a treatment, it's not a cure. Right. Right? And a lot of people want to be cured, but they don't realize that the curing comes into the process. When you pro- when you go through the process enough, right. you cleanse yourself, you get rid of a lot of the stuff you need to get rid of, then eventually you can cure yourself because your body's self-healing. Yeah, That's the whole thing about massages, especially when I'm doing this, is I want people to understand is that I'm not healing you. I have a healing energy. I have a healer's energy, a healer vibe. 
But my whole aspect is to put your body back in alignment so it can do the healing for itself. Right, because you're your own healer. Yeah, Everyone. everybody is. Yeah. And that's one of the things that they know about us that we don't take in consideration, which is the reason why they keep us so dependent on the medical system. Like yeah. That. Well, yeah. it's funny, too, because even people who are super skeptical about that type of stuff, mm-hmm. like, believe in placebo effect. Mm-hmm. Which, is which is, crazy. like, the craziest shit in the world is not talked about ever. It's it just like, shows that, that, that your brain is that powerful, that your yeah. brain can and do whatever you choose it to do on some real stuff. So just bringing it back to me, um, I would give out, like, my three... Uh, avatars that I just recently came up with. My three avatars would be uh, women in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, or whatever the case is that uh, make six, seven figures. My second avatar would be people with medical issues, so people with fibromyalgia, um, people with um, any type of rare medical conditions and people that go through uh, surgeries and stuff like that that need post-op care uh, that massage can definitely help with, lymphatic drainage, that type of deal. And then the third thing or third avatar would be business owners. So... If I could find an older woman who makes six, seven figures, who either has any issues that she's trying to get rid of or better herself for, or just even take care of herself more so, um, and then owns a business, that would be the perfect person for me. So just so y'all know. If y'all know anybody <laughs> like that, y'all can refer me to. Let me know. Yeah. But everybody, I want to help everybody. Um, but I want to get in more to a, a specified space with people that really believe in the heal in the same way of healing themselves that I believe when I'm able to work with them that I can help them with. For example, I am taking my own health so seriously that I feel as though if I work with you, I can help you get that same energy and result. It's just a matter of you sticking with me long enough to get that desired result. And a lot of people kind of give up early on. Yeah. And that's why people never get the bodies that they're looking for and that they want because they never make a lifestyle change to get the body that they want. They literally do seasonal or occasional changes and life doesn't work that way. If you want the actual change. Right. right? And so like, you don't eat meat. No. And that's because you were finding yourself too hungry. You said, and I don't think that ever... insatiable feeling. Yeah. Um, when I used to work at this, uh, I think it was Massage Envy back in California, like Manhattan Beach or somewhere like that. Uh, I was near this rice bowl place and I was never a big chicken or beef person. If I was to eat any type of meat, I typically would eat salmon, right? I used to get this salmon bowl, man, and this salmon bowl would be like $20 a pop. And I noticed immediately almost afterwards, like an hour, maybe 35, maybe 45 minutes afterwards, I'd be hungrier more so than before I ate the food to begin with. Interesting. And I was just tired of feeling like I had to just always eat something just to keep going. Because how it, did you know that was the meat though? Like in my head, it would just be like, how would you know? It's not just the meat. It's it's a lot of the chemicals that okay. we eat. I think I have a tapeworm. It, 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 it sounds like it. <laughs> and most people do. Most people do have a bunch of parasites oh, in fuck. there. So, no, that's, I'm that's pretty sure I did at least one time, but I don't no, know. No, everybody do. Uh, if yeah, you okay. eat meat, you got parasites. In oh, you know? that's, that's a fact. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, that's that's kind of what it came down to. Is I was just tired of that, and then always feeling like if I didn't eat within an hour, two hours, I'd get a headache. I don't know if you guys deal with that. No, no that but really like if I don't eat for longer. a couple hours, I feel I start to feel shitty. I don't get the headache though. I just feel like it's a general body. I don't so know. So that's what I used to get, but it used to turn into headaches occasionally. Fair, but that's from having a bunch of toxins in you. Right. Shit, that's what that means. Sure. And so all um, I eat is toxins. Yeah, most people do. <laughs> and uh the way that I was able to start was through the the vegetarian stuff at Subway. I used to see people okay. get those and they used to look so good, but mindset wise, it ain't got no meat on it. <laughs> right. So I'm not gonna feel full, right? Is what I would think, right? But when I ate it, I noticed that I could that energy would last me about four hours plus. And I wouldn't be hungry for another four hours. You know what I mean? So that Fair. was a big difference right there. Well, yeah, and that's your anecdotal data. That's your, you right. know, it. this is the actual empirical data that you're gathering for your body. Right. And yeah. that helped me. And so that made me be like, you know what? I'm not going back to that. And the longer I've been without it, whenever I do eat meat, it makes me sick. And so it's not necessarily the meat itself. It's the chemicalized oh, crap the in, yeah. in the meat. Mm. But also when we think about meat and what we eat, you guys ever heard of the concept of a frugivore? No, never heard of that. All right, so apes and and um, gorillas and stuff like that are typically frugivores, right? And they have similar structures set up the way that our mouths are set up. 
frugivores typically eat vegetation, nuts, berries, Fruit. fruits, vegetables, that type of deal, right? The concept of an omnivore is completely made up. You know what I mean? Because a carnivore's digestive tract and the way that they digest meat and food is completely different than any other animal, herbivore, all of that, right? And when we look at how we have to prepare the meat in order just to eat it, you know how many stages of preparation it has to go through and just to eat the shit? Yeah. First of all, you wouldn't grab something off the middle of the street that was just killed to go do it, usually. Most people wouldn't anyway. Right. Some people would. Oh, yeah. Most people, there, most people, most people yeah, wouldn't, yeah. right? Yeah. Because of all the... the you a know, lot of work that goes into it. It's a lot of work, but not even just a lot of work. You know how much shit it's in that thing that's just sitting there? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> When you think of parasites, a lot of those parasites are living in a decaying carcass. So why would you eat a decaying carcass just to just to survive, just to just to just to have food, right? Yeah. But I can also understand though. You can try to get it before it decays. It's not survival even that. No, because it's, it's decaying anything. as soon as you kill it. Right. That's because there's no pumping of the blood, so it's the same. We want to live. That's why. But you're not. You're not getting life out of it. <laughs> well, we think we are. That's exactly. That's well, a, we that's think the we are. That's the condition. Also, people worry about the protein. You know, shit like that. Like, you know, do you supplement? Do you find so, yourself needing to supplement, or how's that? Is when that you all think about protein, too? what are the proteins that these animals are eating that we eat typically? I don't know if it's we're getting it from their diet. Yeah, we're getting our protein from their diet. Not I from think them. we're getting it from them. No, because no. look at what they eat. Cows eat what? Grass. Chickens eat what? I don't know. They eat vegetation. Right. Pigs eat what? Usually vegetation. Slop. Slop. I don't well, know. Usually vegetation, know. right? <laughs> um, horses, if we eat horses, what do they usually eat? Hey. Vegeta yeah. We just gonna use it as vegetation. Fair, we're gonna use that fair, word as vegetation. Fair. But isn't the protein from them and their muscles and shit? It's not from what they're eating, is it? But where if they're getting their protein, bro? I don't know how muscles are made up or the protein. Yeah, I don't know anything. All right, so these animals are getting their protein from what they're eating. That's right. why they eat that. Right. And when you think about the, the the longest living animals, the strongest animals, and the fastest animals, they're all vegetarians. Horses, vegetarians. Tortoises that live hundreds of years, vegeta are vegetarians. Gorillas, some of the biggest animals, strongest animals out there, vegetarians. Yeah, where's their protein? All right, good point. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> And there, and you gotta remember how much vegetation they gotta eat in order to get that that the the size that they get, and they're just naturally that size. So when you think about it, logically speaking, and again, frugivores were frugivores. That's where we would get mainly our stuff from, and it's longer lasting and stuff like that. And when you were talking about eating meat for protein, you gotta remember all the bad shit too: the cholesterol, the right. parasites. And then all the, the main shit you would get from the meat you're cooking out of it. You got to eat it bloody to get the main benefit right. from it. And how many people are going to eat a bunch of bloody meat? <laughs> I mean, I agree with everything you're saying. I would just throw back, though, that, like, I feel like, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, we'll just pretend he's a gorilla for, for a gorilla human. Yeah. Like, he could probably eat plants and shit or whatever and not have the protein. That, there's proteins in plants and shit. Like, there's just not the as prevalent amount as in, like, meat, right? So, like... That's not true, though. Believe oh, I don't fucking know. I don't... Don't... Yeah, don't sit here and sit here again. <laughs> yeah, this is... This is feelings, not facts. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. Uh, I don't know. If you're just moving, he moves. Gorillas move, right? So, like, they could fucking probably grow... To be like as strong as they are, even with like I don't know a McDonald's diet, like a sh like not the real. I, like I don't know. Could? Anyone? I mean, yeah. What? Basically, have you seen Super point? Size Me, bro? I have seen Super <laughs> Size Me. Right, so, so what That's person hilarious. you know can you can literally? He didn't move though. He didn't do any of the extra shit. You you brought up stretching, yeah. moving, and eating right, right? So like, I just feel like he did. He moved and he probably stretched. I don't know for a fact. I'm just yeah. guessing. Yeah. And he fucked his diet up, and it fucked him up. It yeah. hurt. Yeah. But like, vice versa, like if. A gorilla is fucking moving, climbing trees, doing whatever all day. Like, even if he doesn't get the most balanced nutrition, like, those muscles are fucking still moving. They may not be growing at, a, like, a exponential fucking rate or whatever, but, like, they're still going to be, like, yeah. I don't know, dude. Well, I guess like, the point you're making is it doesn't need to be moving. I don't even know what point well, I'm making. I'm just talking words <laughs> nah, nah, here. That's that, nah, I hear you. I actually hear everything no, yeah, you're saying, and it, it makes sense. I think people don't take into consideration that the concept of our stomachs being our second brain, right? Sure. And 70% of your immune system is in your stomach. I've so heard. if you're eating shit that is fucking up your immune system and your body's always replenishing itself every year or so, right? 
then eventually every time your body replenishes itself, no matter how much you move, no matter how much you you stretch, right? Your body's making a very broken already, you know, completed, no, not completed. They're making cells that are very incomplete and already kind of like, uh, right. what is that? Compromise. Defective. Yeah, They're making compromise. chicken salad out of chicken shit. <laughs> okay sure. kind of it's right it's an interesting thing situation but that's what i'm saying yeah you're making you're replenishing your body with things that are very destructive towards you in the long run because as your body gets older obviously it slows down and it's going to need those replenishing of the cells to be at its top-notch level for it to be continuously to grow the way it needs to grow you feel like it helps your skin what being vegetarian yeah, yeah. I hear but that even all beyond the, time. the the, it's the energy thing. It's how I feel. Mm. I don't give a fuck about the skin. I don't give a fuck about the muscles. Nice. It's it's how I feel though. It really put you talking about putting in perspective on feeling your body. Yeah. A lot of people eat to not again feel bad. They're not eating to feel good. Because when you think about a lot of the foods we eat, how many people can say after they eat like a burger from McDonald's or they're chicken just doing salad, mouth pleasure, right? They're not they're trying not to feed feeling, their body. They're, yeah. they're not yeah. feeling good. I don't know also, anybody. It's a time thing. That's a lot what I'm of saying. it's time thing. It is time too. But yeah. a lot of people I know that are eating the shitty foods that they're eating, they're not gonna go afterwards and be like, you know what? I feel good enough to go ahead and just do like maybe ten push-ups. Just no, to do no, it. that's a good point. That's you know fair. what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. But if I eat, if I eat the vegetation shit that I'm eating, like I drink a, a smoothie or something like that, I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I want to go to sleep. Mm. Right. You know what I mean? I definitely notice a correlation between eating healthy and having more energy and shit. The itis is not normal. I used to the think itis, that was normal. Nice. You really right, think sweet. that's normal because right. when you think about school, this is something that, uh, and I feel like this is what led me into the vegetarian thing. Remember in school, uh, if you didn't eat the breakfast program or whatever the case is, and come in early for breakfast. Did you notice after lunch you'd feel groggy afterwards? Yeah. Every time after I lunch, I just felt groggy because I was in school. <laughs> no, I, I don't disagree with that, but I mean that I've noticed the energy shift would happen strongly after lunch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, and it's because of the foods we're eating, and if we, if you notice when we got older, that energy kind of still stayed there, even at work. I've noticed at certain part of the day i oh, feel yeah. tired yeah. more so than, than oh yeah than average. we do With pizza the... fridays at work uh -huh. like just like a couple of people at work just because our job sucks and like we want to like do what we can to like make it not suck <laughs> yeah. but like every single time it doesn't matter like no one feels better that's what I'm, that's <laughs> what no I'm one saying. feels better after the that's pizza what I'm saying. we want to go to sleep that's what i'm saying and and that's we are so conditioned to not pay attention to that and think that that's literally your body saying that I don't need this shit in also, my system. Also, our diets, a regular American diet is so all over the place. It's destructive. It's all over the place, too. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to even pinpoint it, it right? Is, it is. It's like, well, I'm just tired because like you said, I'm just growing because I'm growing. It's like, who knows what? Because mm -hmm. we're constantly putting all this different stuff in as far as like being in tune with my body. Mm -hmm. I can Conscious. eat shitty stuff and not notice because mm -hmm. I'm so not so in tune with it. it. So yeah, yeah. I'm just yeah. like constantly eating. People are like, well, when you have dairy, don't your stomach get messed up? I'm like, my stomach's always messed up. You know what I mean? Because I'm just eating shit for all the time. That was another thing, too. That all the time. I used to get a lot of bloatedness in my lower stomach a lot of the times when I was eating foods I was eating before. That stopped. So the hunger hunger issue stopped without having to feel like I had to eat every so often. The uh, bloating stopped. Um, the higher energy definitely became a thing. I started nerd, uh, noticing... Um, what would give me heartburn and what wouldn't give me heartburn? Mm -hmm. um, bowel movements. I was always somebody who had multiple bowel movements during the day. But I noticed when I don't eat right, it's so harder to poop than it is to to when I when I do right. eat healthy. When I eat healthy, it comes out pretty easily. When I don't eat healthy, it's like I gotta push. Yeah. And it's a struggle. And it's crazy to me that some people don't poop every day. Yeah. That's fucking wild. Can I've actually imagine? heard listen, there's a guy who runs the Your Mom's House podcast. You ever seen that guy? Yeah. Any? Yeah. He poops once a month. <laughs> yeah, dude. I don't know how you even fucking <laughs> but like the like Dr. Drew or whatever the fuck that they, they've all whatever. I mean, everyone's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. I agree. Yeah, dude. Once a month. You know how much and shit then, festers long. in your but stomach? But then, like you just said, some people paint the bowl multiple times a day, and that can't be good either. So it's like, no, there's got to be a balance. To. You're supposed to, because when multiple you think times about a day? Yeah, that's okay. what I've heard. I've heard the bro, heaviest diet. Bro, well, in think and about it. No, no, think that's about it. That's fair. I don't You have 27 feet of fucking intestines, large and small. Uh, I think and... it's longer than that, isn't okay, it? Okay, we'll Didn't they say it was stretched over a mile? That was like the whole thing when we were young. Like, your intestines would stretch over a mile. Is that not? 
Is that, I am I? So. But even if that's the truth, Fuck, look, dude, why like, did they like, tell me? You're that? right. Let's say that's the, the, the case. Sure. Think about the shit you're eating that you don't digest that gets stuck in those tunnels. Sure. Yeah. So if you're pooping multiple times a day, that means that shit is moving. But to think about it, it's not all coming out. It's not all going to come out because it gets caked in there, right? So the, the worse you eat, the harder that shit gets placked up in there and even more stuck. And that's one of the reasons on why people have guts. I used to think that was normal at a point. I used to think when you get older, you just get a gut. Right. That's not fucking normal. Right. That's how some people would just, yeah, accept life. Yeah, Bro, like, that's literally is... mean you got a bunch of shit stuck in your fucking gut. That's what that means. Yo, it's crazy because they say, <laughs> I got to try it. I haven't tried it yet. But they say we ought to do enemas regular. Interesting. I know that's a wild concept and well, shit. Well, only wild because you think the cavemen didn't. You know what I mean? I but then again, our diets are so much different now than the cavemen's were. You so know what I mean? Meat the cavemen meal. didn't have dentists. They didn't have all kind of shit. Well, but the thing about lived. it is, though, they wasn't eating meat every day. That's what I'm saying. Their diets were meat. way different. Yeah, they, they didn't have processed sugar. Bro, they didn't have all this shit. Red they, dye. They, yes, <laughs> they meat, their meat lasted them for months. Like when they would kill an animal, their meat would last them for months, like over over three to six months. So they wasn't eating that shit every day because it was a survival thing, right? Yeah. So if if the way that we eat it now, they saying that on what? Super Bowl Sunday, it's like almost seven to ten million pounds of fucking chicken wings are served at Ooh, oh, shit. I love me some chicken wings. Oh hell nah, bro. <laughs> hell when nah. you think about it, what Did makes I... what makes the meat good? The we, sauce. The sauce, the seasonings, <clears throat> and what are they all based out of? Herbs and spices. Right. Dude, you'd hate me. I love Scrapple, dude. I don't even give a oh, shit. Give you. me some yeah, fucking Scrapple, dude. For doing, it's, just, it's just a lot of people. That's why people have the issues that they have because they're aware that this shit is bad for them, but they don't care. Right. That's the craziest thing. Fair. Like, I know that I shouldn't be eating this shit, but it tastes so good. Yeah. And I don't give a fuck. So. Mm. You don't know. And it ain't bothersome right now, so I ain't got to worry about it. That's what people think. Right. Because it's not immediately bothersome. That's and when the it thing. becomes it bothersome. It damage that you don't even notice. Bro, and then that's what I'm saying. When you look at people that get older and have these diseases, that's where it came from. These diseases didn't start in their old age, they've been festering. Yeah. That's where the shit comes from. And that's why they got us at a young age eating the shit we're eating because it's to catalyze into the shit of being they sick adults. Lie to us. I know. Right? <laughs> you saw the, the food pyramid. Us. The government <laughs> loves us, right? So, like, honestly, I attribute, like, the way I look today, honestly, with the fact that I got home-cooked meals, like, m m the majority of the time growing up, there yeah. was McDonald's here and there yeah, when yeah. we would fucking beg for it, and they would, like, relent. Right, right. <laughs> but, like, when they didn't relent, which was 90% of the time, we would right. get home-cooked meals. Right. I also had to play soccer. I was, like, forced to play soccer, and right. so I think that, like, made my metabolism, like, stronger than it probably fucking... But, no, honestly, like, and I, I look at kids today that don't... I, I'm just... A lot of these kids, I'm pretty sure, aren't getting the, the home cooked meals at least at the at, all, at the frequency I at was getting all. them or whatever, yeah, and it shows it to does. a point. You know it what does. I mean? Like it's it's one thing to be like chubby, like that's fine. <laughs> Ever you know, you, we're gonna have baby fat. Some people get you know don't lose their baby fat till they're <laughs> fucking in college. I don't. I hate people that are sloppy. And they don't do shit diatribe. about it. <laughs> no, I no, I agree with that. I don't I don't mind because I, I I think big women are amazing. But I think it's a, it's like a there's big women that are fine out here that that have nice shapes that can work it. There's 100%. a difference between big and sloppy. I agree. <laughs> right. Yeah. There like is. a lot of these people that are calling themselves curvy, baby, you're past curvy. Like yeah. curvy you're was gelatinous. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. Gelatinous. This guy rules. Yeah. This guy rules. Yeah. <laughs> hey, well, thanks That's for coming on, bro. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for tuning in for another week of us yes. bullshitting. We gotta go check on Fluffy. Uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, appreciate you, bro. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me, brother. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh. If this doesn't work, if this doesn't work, I'll kill myself. Damn. 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 Damn.